Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I call the special meeting of the School Board of Palm Beach County of August 25th, 21, 2021 to order at 2.03 p.m. Mrs. Bass, please call the roll. District 1, Barbara McQuinn. Here. District 2, Alexandria Ayala. Here. District 3, Karen Brill. Here. District 4, Erica Whitfield. Here. District 5, Frank Barbieri. Here. District 6, Marcia Andrews. Here. District 7, Deborah Robinson. Here. We have quorum with all seven board members present. Also joining us is Superintendent Michael Burke, General Counsel Sean Bernard, Inspector General Teresa Michael, and Board Clerk Carol Bass. Senior staff members will join us periodically as directed by the superintendent. Viewers and listeners can access the meeting today by either watching on Comcast channels 234 and 235, Uverse channel 99, or by using the YouTube link on our webpage at palmbeachschools.org. In the event that the link is interrupted for technical reasons, please switch over to the TV channels. All board meetings are recorded in their entirety and posted on the district website within 24 hours. We also offer a listening only option which the public can access by calling 561-357-5900 or toll free at 1-866-930-7015. The meeting ID is 1-561-380-1124 this meeting is being transcribed by a closed captioner, so remember to speak at a reasonable pace. Will everyone please stand for the pledge to be led by Superintendent Michael Burke? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. I'd like to welcome any pu public speakers who are joining us in person today. While your attendance here at the board meeting is appreciated, please be mindful of important safety protocols that the board now has in place to conform to COVID-19 safety guidelines and school board policy. In an effort to keep all participants and district employees safe, everyone must obey all lawful orders issued by school police, which may include remaining or moving to a specific area or location, lowering voices for safety reasons or other safety related commands. Please sit only in designated seats. If you don't be quiet, I'll have you removed from the room. Do you understand that? Stop it. Do not move any furniture and do not move about the room unless you are speaking at the podium, exiting to the restroom or leaving the building. Please maintain social distancing at all times. Rem Officer, who said that? I want him removed. Please maintain social distancing at all times, remain in the designated areas, and leave the property once your visit is complete. School police has been instructed to remove anyone from the meeting who does not adhere to these safety protocols and procedures as I have outlined. Please respect this cautionary warning that in the event of interference with the orderly processes of the meeting, failure to follow the safety protocols and procedures, or otherwise disruptive conduct, it will result in removal of the person or persons from the meeting or other action. Public comments must relate to the subject matter of the agenda item for which the speaker had requested to address. The School District of Palm Beach County supports the peaceful assembly of persons to express themselves regarding matters concerning district students, employees, and the community. However, if such peaceful assembly results in a disturbance, those persons may be subject to arrest or other lawful action. So please be respectful of all persons who are present on school district property. The public speakers must be orderly, behave with civility, and refrain from obscene or vulgar conduct, use of profanity, personal attacks, slanderous remarks, or statements that tend to incite violence or the breach of the peace. In addition, no person attending this meeting is to harass any other person in the room. Further, loud or prolonged applause, cheering, heckling, or jeering is disrupted to the meeting and for those attempting to speak. This type of conduct will not be tolerated. Failure to abide by these standards is considered interfering with the expeditious or orderly process of the board meeting and will be considered grounds for removal from the meeting by school police. The board has sat here courteously listening respectfully to public speakers to cite many of the speakers acting disrespectfully and uncivilly to the board and district staff. This board will no longer tolerate this kind of behavior as it's preventing this board from managing and conducting its business. So let me make this perfectly clear. 
If you say or do anything obscene or vulgar, I will direct school police to remove you immediately. This is your warning. Do not engage in this behavior because you will be removed. If you use any profanity, make slanderous remarks or statements that tend to incite violence or breach of the peace, I will direct school police to remove you immediately. This is your warning. You will be removed. School police have had the seating arranged based on security protocols. If you move your chairs, I will direct school police to remove you immediately. Again, this is your warning. You will be removed. Once you are seated, if you get out of your seats to go anywhere other than to the podium, to the restroom, or to leave the meeting, I will direct school police to remove you immediately. This is your warning. You will be removed. If you heckle or jeer a board member, a district staff member, or a member of the public speaking to the board, or do anything else that I consider interfering with the expeditious orderly process of this meeting, I will direct school police to remove you immediately. This is your warning. You will be removed. We will maintain decorum, civility, and the orderly conduct of school board business and I thank you for your cooperation. Mr. Superintendent, we have one item pulled from consent. Do you have anything else you want to pull? There is nothing else. Okay. Board, board members, we only have one item. We had one item on consent. It's been pulled. It's PLLGC1. We need a motion to approve the agenda. Motion by Mrs. McQuinn, second by Dr. Robinson. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Board members, do you have any disclosures or abstentions? Seeing none, Mr. Superintendent, comments? Yes, sir. I just want to share, our school leaders and teachers are working incredibly hard to operate schools in the most difficult circumstances we've experienced to date. Uh, we've had over 2,000 COVID cases on our campus, both staff and students, and that is more than half of what we experienced all last school year. Uh, we have over about 4,500 students currently directed to stay home. And this is you know, just creating an enormous strain and uh, administrative burden on our school leaders. So I just wanted the board, you know, we continue to thank our principals and our teachers, and I just want to let you know, uh, Mr. Tierney and I have been checking in with the principals and our principal supervisors and lending support to the greatest extent possible, but the, the real, work, real work is being shouldered by our school teams. And uh, just can't thank them enough for persevering through difficult times. The streamlined COVID-19 decision tree is helping somewhat. We are able to, if a student's been vaccinated or had COVID-19 within the last 90 days, we're able to get them quickly back to class if they're not showing any symptoms. So that, that's been a little bit of help. Uh, today, we had a productive call with our state and federal legislative delegation. We shared some of the challenges. Uh, they also received a report from Dr. Alonzo about the, the ongoing concerns of rapid transmission within our community and, and not just Palm Beach County, but across the state and country. Uh, we are seeing our hospitals uh, being heavily utilized. Excuse me, Mr. Superintendent. School police have advised me that people in the unmasked room are standing and refusing to sit. I'm giving you one last chance. Sit down in your seats because those people standing will be removed from the meeting. Sit down in your seats. Officers, you can take anybody out of the meeting that's refusing to sit in the seats. Take them out of the building. Officers. The lady in the white and black top, remove her from the meeting, please. The man in the blue shirt, remove him from the meeting. The man in the black shirt, remove him from the meeting. The lady in the blue, the blue shirt, sit down. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Superintendent. You may continue. Thank you. Uh, a few more items. So the, the legislative delegation call was, was very productive. I, was, uh, I felt like we were, some of our concerns were well heard and you know, offered the support about what we might be able to do to try to help mitigate the, some of the challenges we're facing. Uh, so we'll continue to work with our, our local delegation. The uh, one thing I want to mention every chance I get is that we have some staffing needs and we are actively recruiting for much more bus drivers, substitute teachers, teachers, pretty much a wide array of positions, our maintenance team, uh, custodians. So if there's anyone watching that would like to be part of the school district and join our team, uh, please visit our website and look for those job opportunities, which there are, there are several. On a, uh, on a bright note, we're bringing back a very popular uh, Thank a Teacher program that runs every Thursday, Thank a Teacher. And we did this last year and we're kicking it back off and it will continue throughout the entire year uh, where people can nominate and thank a teacher 
Uh, they'll be eligible for prizes, and we'll be showcasing the winners. Uh, more information is available on our website, palmbeachschools.org slash thankateacher. And then I had a kind of an important comment I needed to make to the board and the public. Uh, yesterday, during a presentation to the Chamber of Commerce of the Palm Beaches, I responded to an offer of community support with a Warren Zevon song that has always been a favorite of mine. While this response was made in jest uh, to send lawyers guns and money, it was fully intended to be a lighthearted quip, but I understand guns should not be, have been referenced in any manner. I apologize and take full responsibility for my inappropriate comment. Please know that I only want the best for all students within our county and will continue to work hard as superintendent. And that concludes my remarks. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Mrs. Uh, McQuinn, Ms. Ayala. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and thank you for leading the conversation today about something that I think is so incredibly important when it comes to the work that we're tasked with doing in this chamber. Uh, boundaries. Not, that the, not just the bounds of our jurisdiction as a sovereign body, which are under attack, and that's what we're actually here to discuss today, but the bounds of decorum in these chambers. Since Monday, I've received multiple reports from teachers and principals of egregious abuses from the public, even from parents with children in those very schools on our campuses. There have been dangerous confrontations, threats of violence, threats of going to principals' homes, and more. Last week, one speaker who addressed us in this chamber had the, the gall to call out one of our professional team members in this chamber and humiliate her, make erroneous claims about her, and it really abuse her for no reason. Our staff and administration do not deserve this. We are members elected for the public representation. Leave them out of it. They are professional members of our staff who are educators at heart, doing what is best for our children and for our system. And I was absolutely disgusted that I had to sit there and listen to someone from the public defame someone on our team. I apologize to that individual and my, my heart is with you. In the several months, all of us, as well as myself, have been called names I won't even mention from my own mouth on this microphone, right? Epithets that we are not deserving of and accused of being corrupt, threatened, that people will come to our homes inside of these chambers. It is a privilege to address your public officials and to be in this chamber. And we have been called out by name, which is against decorum. Members of our staff have been called out by name, which is against decorum. This would not occur in any other municipality that I know of in this district, because you've all been to those meetings too, and it has to stop. The lack of decorum is not only against our code of conduct, but it sets a dangerous precedent. The culture of our district starts right here. And our teachers, our administrators, our principals, and our schools are looking to us for how we are going to allow the public to address us. I cannot in good conscience continue allowing the behavior that's occurring in this chamber to seep down to the people who do not deserve it. Let me be clear. Any abuses to our administration at our schools that I hear of will be taken extremely seriously and I will do everything in my power to make sure individuals are warned and that there is follow through. Protesting is one thing, but threats will not fly here and it has to stop. So Mr. Chairman, I wanna thank you for upholding the rules of conduct in these meetings and making sure that we can do our job. Thank you. Mrs. Whitfield. Thank you so much. I just want to take a, a quick opportunity to once again recognize our teachers and our principals. Um, the other night, I had the opportunity of receiving a call from my daughter's principal uh, at 8 o'clock at night, and I just want you all to know that I see you, and I know how difficult this time has been. Um, our principals have been just unbelievably dedicated to the school district. The work that they're doing to take care of our families just means so much to me. Um, and I, I know I say it all the time, but I, I really don't think we can thank our teachers enough, um, our bus drivers, our school food service workers, our custodians. Um, you know, as Mr. Burke was mentioning, we're low on staff right now, so we are asking a lot even more of our staff, um, the time that they're having to put in and the, the stress that they have of um, coming to, to work every day and putting in this time. Um, it just, I want you to know that, that I really, really am very grateful for the work that you're doing. Um, finally, I want to thank the other school districts in the state um, who have uh, joined us in this mask mandate. I feel like it, uh, it really is a wonderful thing to see other school districts um, with us. Um, I had an opportunity last week to go to meet with a bunch of um, school board members from the south area of Florida and um, to be able to talk with them about what is going on in the state and, and to join together 
Um, it was a great moment for me uh, to feel that camaraderie, and I feel um, very heartened by the words of many of the board members throughout the state, and I'm just grateful uh, to them, and you know, hopefully we can go forward, and again, I'm gonna continue to push that there is an end in sight to this mask issue. I want it to be over, just as so many of our families want to, um, so hopefully we will see an end, but right now um, I'm very happy and grateful to all of our staff for the work that they're doing to help keep kids safe. Thank you. Mrs. Andrews. Thank you, and good afternoon. And this follows the lines of what uh, you heard Mrs. Whitfield say. I want to thank the parents and the students as we work very hard to keep all students healthy. Principals, teachers, and staff, I truly appreciate everything you do each day for our students. These are trying times during COVID-19 pandemic. With the Delta variant, it's truly a challenge for everyone. Schools, you have kept calm and steady. Bus drivers, I see you taking the students to and from school. Custodians, I've seen you clean the schools. I see you in this building keeping everything nice for everyone. At School Food Service and others, you're feeding us. You're keeping us really, really where we need to be. Health and safety is number one. I want to say to the school nurses, I had an opportunity to be in an elementary school the other day, and one of the things I wanted to do, and I always try to do, is wave at the school nurse and say thank you for everything you do in keeping our children healthy. But I know our school nurses are very, very busy right now. I saw a little kindergartner waiting there in that little tiny seat to see the school nurse and the door was closed because the nurse was so busy with someone else. I see evidence of all the work you're doing, school nurses, through these high COVID numbers. I see it through these high quarantine numbers as I'm in and out of the schools. School nurses, school teams, you are our heroes. We will always protect our students, our staff, and our families right here in Palm Beach County. Thank you teachers as you volunteer to turn on your cameras to educate our students who are at home on quarantine. You're volunteering to do this, teaching mm -hmm. simultaneously, doing whatever it takes to make sure students learn. I would like to have all cameras turned back on for instruction given to all students under quarantine. I know that this is against the orders from the governor, but I must tell my board I want to see those cameras on. I want the students to get the best education possible. And the only way to do it when we have thousands of children home is to get those cameras back on. And I'm willing to fight for that to make that happen. And I want to look out. I see him in the audience, Mr. Justin Katz, our CTA president for working with the district so that we can get some extra money. Maybe we can use our ESSA form, uh, funds or our, our American Rescue Act money that's coming down from the, the government to pay the teachers some extra money because it's an extra time where they have to do so much extra and we recognize the extra work they do. So as we work together through these unique times, difficult times, and I see people acting out, I just want you to know that we're gonna continue working hard to keep our eyes on the ball and the ball is with our students to do the best job we can to make sure that they're successful. Thank you. Dr. Robinson. Thank you. Um, I did not outline any comments, but I do want to say thank you, Mr. Barbieri, for setting expectations. Um, I hope that we will set the same kind of expectations for appropriate decorum at schools. Um, some of the things that I've heard um, some of my fellow board members referred to are quite disturbing. Um, I hope that things do not uh, escalate anymore, but we need to make sure that all of our employees um, know that they're safe. Now, I want to also um, actually thank my fellow board members for getting us to the place that I think is the appropriate place to be in the interest of good public health. I want to also um, point out to you that I shared some information from the state of Utah in terms of a what they call the test to play and test to stay. 
um, program that they had last school year, and there's a report from MMWR on the number of instructional days that were saved because of this initiative. But the other thing I really want to point out is, so I've talked about metrics for a year and a half, right? The metrics that they used to invoke their test to stay plan was if more than, it was initially 1% of the students, uh, what 1% of the number of students on campus, if there had been that many school associated COVID cases, they would either shut down the school well, no, let me correct that. They would either require that the students be tested or they go home for distance learning, right? And so with that testing um, protocol, they were able to m keep students in class. And I just provide that um, as, a, as a FYI. I am not suggesting that we immediately run down that road, but just to keep an eye on what has worked elsewhere in terms of keeping students and staff as safe as possible um, regarding um, this infectious disease, as well as maintain in-classroom instruction, which I think we all prefer. Um, so I would ask um, that you take a look at that study um, and that our district leadership look at it and see if there's any pieces or parts of that that would be um, used appropriately in Palm Beach County. Thank you. Ms. Brill. Thank you. So it does get awfully difficult when you get down the line to me to say something different than the others have said. But ditto to Ms. Andrews, Dr. Robinson, right on board with what you said. Um, but I will add just a couple comments to what Ms. Andrews said about teachers turning on their cameras. To the superintendent, I know that you're meeting um, with CTA President Mr. Katz. Um, hopefully we can come to some agreement that will work because when the students are home quarantining, you know, I, I really hope that they're able to get the supports that they need. Um, also, when we talk about more money for the teachers, I just want to throw out once again the media specialists that were left out um, when the governor gave the $1,000 bonus to teachers. And finally, I did speak with the superintendent about some possible um, agreement on other fronts with the healthcare district. And as Dr. Robinson was speaking, I would really love if we had the ability for our employees to be tested at their school sites. I know that right now the agreement is with the healthcare district for students if their parents have said that they could be tested. Um, but I think if we, if we have a way to make it easier for people, again, it's keeping everybody as safe as possible in these very trying times. Thank you. Thank you, my comments. Uh, I want to echo what the other board members said with respect to the teachers. I appreciate the fact that there are a great many teachers that are, are turning on their cameras um, they're doing this voluntarily. They're not being mandated to do that. Certainly when the children are sent home because of being exposed or have COVID, uh, we need to make every effort we can to educate those children and give them the best possible alternative to being sitting in front of their teacher. Of course, the, the governor has indicated that there will, be no, there will be no funding for any students that are not in their classrooms um, and we use distance learning. I'm not so concerned about the funding because I'm sure that our superintendent and chief financial officer can figure out some way to fund that, but more, I'm more concerned that the, the uh, Commissioner of Education may take away the time that those children spend at home from their credits so that the children don't have the required number of days in their classrooms and therefore are penalized from not being able to move forward or other, other, other um, actions that are not in the be best interest of the children. I also want to thank the principals and teachers and just make a statement to the public. If you aren't happy with the masking, this is your opportunity. You come here and talk to us. I ask you not to get you know, belligerent and threatened. Where our principals are being threatened, our teachers are being threatened, they're doing their jobs. They have no choice. The board has put a policy in place. The superintendent has instructed his staff to follow the board policy. The principals and teachers have absolutely no choice. You're threatening the principals and the teachers is getting nowhere other than getting you know, lifelong uh, educators who are dedicated to educating our children, um, you're, you're, you're penalizing those people for no good reason. They have no choice in, in, in doing what they're supposed to do under the board policy at, at the superintendent's recommendation. So I'd ask that you consider that before you get belligerent and threaten our principals and our teachers who are doing the best job they can um, in a very difficult situation. 
Board members, the, the next item, we have no consent, so we will not approve the consent agenda. Obviously, the next item is BRD1. I'll read that one. Pardon me? Oh, sorry. We have to go to speakers first, of course. Um, I'll call you three at a time. You have three minutes. Please come to the podium. Remember the warnings that you got earlier. There will be no second warning on those. I'll call you three at a time. Please come up to a microphone and state your name and watch the clock. Justin Katz, Angelique Contreras, Kevin Wetterman. The next three after that will be Jennifer Showalter, Danielle Underwood, and Michael Lefebvre. Good afternoon. My name is Justin Katz. I'm the president of the Palm Beach County Classroom Teachers Association. Um, I came here to only speak briefly on the agenda item in reference to uh, your meetings, these meetings. And I appreciate uh, the comments that were made at the beginning because they show temperance when you could otherwise create rules that would further restrict public comment. All you've asked is for people to follow the rules, whether you agree or disagree with what people say in here. They shouldn't be threatening people. That's unacceptable. You come here to express your views, whether it's on masks or on books or whatever else we do around here. But I'm pleading with the people who are behind me, who I see every meeting, and I certainly don't attack them when they speak, whether I agree or disagree, because I have a profound respect for public comments. I've been speaking in these meetings for 10 years, more than a quarter of my life, and I've gotten traction and gotten things done because I haven't come in here and attacked people or threatened people. It's because I feel like I've made valid points. So again, I appreciate the policy. I support the policy that's before us. I ask anyone who speaks at these meetings to honor the rules so you can do what you came here to do, which is express your opinion during the time allotted because they can, they're within their rights without making any new rules, reduce that three minutes to one minute if they want to, or 30 seconds. I've seen it happen in other government meetings. In Tallahassee, they do it all the time and in anticipation that time will run out and they won't be able to conduct business. So in the interest of helping you, even if I disagree with your position, follow the rules so you can speak and there can be decorum and the points can be made from all sides because whether I agree with you, I do respect your right to do this and I don't want to see you lose that right because that might mean I lose that right and get swept up in it. So thank you all for your time. Again, I support the policy. I think it goes far enough. It stresses that you have powers and you can use them, but doesn't create new rules that are burdensome on the public speakers. So thank you all and thank everybody for attending today. I appreciate everyone's presence. Good afternoon, my name is Kevin Wetterman. I have two children in Palm Beach County School District 5. Um, this is my first time speaking. Um, it's with sincere belief that the board cannot require a medical exemption for face masks. The current legislation and executive order leaves the decision to the parents at this time. Your decision to willfully defy the governor's orders has done a lot more damage than you think. Your decision has created an environment that has, p has pitted students, teachers, parents, and administrators against each other. The reports of harassment and bullying coming out each day is because of your actions. You say that the threat of losing pay will not deter you. Trust me, a lot of us understand that because we have trouble relating with you on so many levels. Having said that, I would like to thank you as your decisions have created an invaluable lesson for my fifth grader. She has watched school board meetings where the board laughed as they were told by the superintendent that they were getting away from the guidance they wanted to follow and were making up their own rules. She watched as the superintendent attended an event that did not mandate mask indoors, not to mention her asking his comments about sending guns. What does that mean, she asked, and why is he not wearing a mask? I thought we all had to wear a mask. Isn't that what they said? She was able to see firsthand when the actions of the people that are supposed to be an advocate for her are done in poor taste and completely undermine their credibility. That's a lot for an elementary kid to take in. The good thing is, is that she's confident in her decision. She understands that she is standing up for herself and that sometimes to be brave, she has to stand alone. Even when the bully is a big one, 
that she feels in this room. We also say to follow the science. I would ask you to please show me the science that shows wearing masks all day for children is not affecting their mental or physical health. I can show you recommendations from other respected health organizations throughout the world, like the WHO, that states, do not mask kids under five. I also have a four-year-old in the school system. And for kids ages six to 11, you might need to put them on at some point. But even then, not all day, but there are all certain situations where it may be required. We will continue to exercise our rights afforded to us by the governor until an entity that we feel actually has the authority tells us to do otherwise. Um, really hope that the board can consider that the medical exemption 504 is a burden on a lot of people. I wish we could have a partnership and something that was a little more level, just people working together. I know there's high emotions here. Um, just trying to be reasonable. Thank you very much. Go ahead, ma'am. Hello, Angelique Contreras, Lake Worth Beach. Um, I hear over and over again from this board that they care about the health and well-being of our children. Yet, our children who are in the minority, who choose not to wear a mask because you had 3% opt out, they are being harassed, bullied, and deemed as a threat. You are creating this hostile environment. You are creating this hostile envi environment for our children. You are pinning the majority against the minority. You are treating these children like second class citizens. You are the ones who show no empathy. You are the ones to blame for this division. Superintendent Burke, how insensitive of you to joke about guns, lawyers, and money. As the face and the voice of this school district, you should represent with integrity and empathy. I am calling for your immediate resignation. We should be, we should be able to trust this board in schools with our children. But time and time again, you have proved you are not fit for this job. We parents have the law on our side. You are the oath breakers. You are the unruly ones. And you are the threat. And you all broke the law. I have a minute left. And I will say this. Every time we try to speak from that room, this board does not listen to us. I was sitting there for a few minutes to speak and couldn't. Many of you don't know, a man was actually arrested in that room while you all were speaking because he was standing in the corner by the trash can. A man was arrested today while you were all speaking. Is that acceptable? We had 30 police officers in the segregated room around us. My child was crying because of all of the police officers around us. We are not the one creating a hostile environment. We are here trying to state our redress of grievance with this board. You all went against the law. We didn't. We want our children to breathe. Please, we are, we are done pleading with you. At this point, the only job and option of our children is to be pulled out of your schools because we cannot trust you with them. And we will be following lawsuits on each one of you. And Burke, Burke, we deserve an apology for what you said and you need to resign immediately.
I'm Jen Showalter here for BRD1 and BD1 and their impacts. On Wednesday, August 18th, you broke, broke state law. Then on Monday, August 23rd, you not only reinforced that, you broke federal law. I'm gonna also state that some of us, us, have had threats made to us and our children. State and congressional members have been made aware of these situations and are actively monitoring them for any further development. By enforcing these new policies, the board is actually segregating students, refusing to educate them and barring them from attending recess PE and lunch. If you think any form of segregation is legal, think again. The DOE governor, among others, have, have officially stated that the school board of Palm Beach County has broken the law. You're breaking the following, but not limited to, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, the Civil Rights Act of 1991, and according to Section 2302B of Title V of the United States Code, any employee who has, the author, who has authority to take, direct others to take, recommend or approve personnel actions may not discriminate on the basis of disability, give unauthorized preference or advantage or injure employment to prospects, retaliate against employees because of individual legal disclosure of evidence, AKA whistleblowing, or retaliate against an employee for exercising an appeal or grievance or refusing to obey an order that would break the law. There are a lot of employees that don't agree with your policy, but they are terrified of being fired. I've talked to them. The board is ignoring Florida Judicial through first district court ruling case number, I can't breathe, yes, <laughs> 1D20-1661, Green versus Atchalucha County, mass mandates directly negate parents' rights as well as constitutional rights. The board broke the law passed by Florida legislature through House and Senate, specifically HB241, the Parents' Bill of Rights. The board broke the law enacted through our executive branch, through executive order 21-175, ensuring parents' freedom to choose masks in school. The board violated strict directives from the Florida Department of Health. That they and the state surgeon general said you cannot use mandatory language except for schools must allow for state option and shall not discriminate or harass students who opt out. I have a video recording of Burke at the end of the last school board meeting saying, we say that we're going to adhere to different uh, protocols including the Department of Health, CDC, state and local guidelines. You may want to strike that whole paragraph at this point, insert others member, other members recorded giggling. We're making up our own rules, insert chuckles. You can see this at palmbeachschools.org under recorded board meetings. America has rule of law and a system of government. You don't get to break the laws just because you don't like them. The law says you cannot legally force students to wear a mask or discipline them. Your legal counsel said that Time's last up. week. Danielle Underwood, Michael LeFaber, Kristen Stevenson. I read the names of Daniel Underwood, Michael LeFaber, and Kristen Stevenson. You're welcome. Go ahead, ma'am, state your name, please. My name's Danielle Underwood, for the record. I would like to know where the funds are gonna come from when you guys go against our governor. Our governor has put forth the Parents' Bill of Rights. It went through the legislative session. The legislators approved of it. It is now state law. You, 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 and you broke the law. Now you should face the judicial system just like the rest of us would if we broke the law. Now for the next 20 seconds, I want you to listen to this little clip right here, and I want you to let this sit in. And when you go to bed tonight, Superintendent Burke, I hope this bothers you, and I hope you write your letter in the middle of your sleep to tell everybody that you will no longer be working for this district. This is what I want you to listen to. With a bunch of laughter and three of you are there send lawyers guns and money well we all know that you're gonna need lawyers and money because we the parents are not done with you and we will sue you so you are gonna need lawyers and money if you'd like some monopoly money we'll give it to you but guns I don't know what you want to do with guns we now would like to file formal complaints to open up an investigation because we fear for our lives 
and our children's lives. What are you going to do with guns, sir? We are not allowed to bring guns here. You are not allowed to request them. There is a sign on the front of this building that says firearms are prohibited in this building. Get back on the subject, ma'am. You're off the subject. You have an agenda item to speak on. Speak it on. It is an matter. agenda item. It's, it's about not an not agenda item. The it's not an law. agenda item. Get off okay. the gun issue. It's so, not an agenda item. So you guys want to break the governor and go against the governor and not following the law. I am stating that Superintendent Burke is not following the law by insinuating that firearms be sent to the school district. It's not an agenda item. Get back to the agenda item or you're finished. Great. So where's the money going to come from that you guys want to fight the governor, which the Parents Bill of Rights law is on our side, not your side, on our side. Our children deserve to breathe. People don't deserve to get treated and threatened like you guys threatened us before. You're saying we're threatening you guys. But I think the other way around. We were threatened with guns. Guns, that is people, that's guns. I encourage you all to contact your lawyers and contact everybody because we're contacting the sheriff's office to red flag you, sir. Michael LeFaber. Michael LeFaber, Kristen Stevenson, tell Talia, tell, I'm sorry, tell Ta Berard. Alicia Berard. Okay. Um, hi, thanks for your time. Um, I'm here to talk about challenging the executive order. What's your name, um, ma'am? What's your name? My name is Kristen Stevenson. I'm a parent in Boca. Thank you. When you challenge the executive order, you challenge both the Constitution and our laws. You challenge the content, which is refuted by all data. And you're asking teachers and administrators to carry out unlawful orders. Um, Dr. Barbieri, at the beginning of the meeting, you noted that parents are, I think you said, harassing teachers and principals when they're just doing their jobs. I would actually argue the opposite. I would argue that their school board is harassing them by asking them to carry out unlawful orders. <laughs> their, their jobs and their livelihoods are being threatened. My husband tells me that in the military, when asked to carry out an unlawful order, there's a chain of command on which he can file a complaint. Where is that chain of command here? If not the governor, right? We all have to follow the governor's orders, whether we like them or not. We can't pick and choose just because we are members of the school, of the school board. Where do the teachers and principals have a chain of command that they can consult with when they are asked to carry out an unlawful order? My second challenge to the executive order would be the science that the order is based on itself. The executive order directly states that masking children may lead to negative health and societal ramifications. I would argue that all of the evidence put out to date supports this. There is no evidence that you or anyone else has provided that masks are safe for children in schools for six hours a day. In fact, JAMA, sorry, I'm so nervous. JAMA Pediatrics put out a study actually showing the carbon dioxide levels of students in school. They went up more than six times what is safe for a room, let alone what is safe inside their little masks. We all know this is wrong. We are not abusive parents. We are a community that is supposed to be sticking together. Our governor has given us leadership with this executive order saying that he trusts us, the law trusts us, to make the right decisions for our children. I don't understand why you believe you are above the law and why this is what you are teaching our kids in school, that some adults don't have to follow the laws. That is just not true. Thank you again for your time. Next three. The next three are Elizabeth Doolin, Anya Doolin, and Brian Vaughn. Mask up. Uh, gotcha. 
My name is Elizabeth Doolin, and I'm speaking on um, the challenge of the executive order on the emergency rules. Good afternoon, and thank you for your time for having me here today. Um, I'm a single parent with a daughter in her senior year at Park Vista High School. My daughter, Anya, is an otter student and an athlete. She works part-time at Dunkin' Donuts and has never been in a bit of trouble. Her dream is to attend college and enter the United States Marine Corps as an officer. Shamefully, I have never attended a school board meeting. I've been busy working, running my household, and being a mom. I will be attending more meetings with hopes to attend all your meetings from this day forward. I wanted to speak on the health of masks, but thought that doesn't make much sense because you're all very capable and much higher educated than me. And I have found the truth, real science, that dispels the nonsense that masks are being used for health and preventative measures. The information has long been available, and 18 months into this, we all know it. So instead, I'm going to speak about the legal aspects of your overreach and failing to follow Governor DeSantis' executive order allowing parents to manage the health of their families. Let me read a quote from a case settled in 1976 called Elrod versus Burns. Loss of First Amendment freedoms for even minimal periods of time, unquestionably constitute irreparable injury. If you continue to push, push false narratives, you will be held accountable. If no way, there's no way that you won't be, because your science isn't science. It's propaganda that can't be proven. It's all just recommendations with nothing supporting it. The school board's business is that of educating our children, not setting child against parent, but rather supporting the family unit and holding up our values and freedoms in the classroom. Instead, my daughter was removed from her class yesterday for refusing to mask up. Next, she was front confronted by her assistant principal who attempted to re-educate her on the health of masks and questioned her as to my involvement in her decisions. The AP stated this was the school board's protocol. And so I hold each and every one of you accountable legally for this violation of our rights. Of course my daughter's decisions are reflective of me and our values. That's called good parenting. And that's my business, not yours. If you choose to make it yours, I will choose to make your removal from your positions my business. And this is to Frank's earlier comment. This is your warning. You will be removed. Thank you for your time. Oh, boy. I'd like to start with uh, something my daughter wrote. She said, you're not going to make me wear a mask anymore. And if people want to wear a mask, they're allowed to. And that's none of my business. But some people don't have to wear a mask. I don't want you to make me wear the mask anymore. Masks are bad for your heart. Now it's my turn. You guys think you're real funny up here, don't you? You think you're high on your real horses. Lawyers, guns, and money, huh, Michael Burke? I guess we kind of feel a little threatened, but... Then again, I guess you wouldn't know how to use them guns anyway, wouldn't you? You guys need them guns to protect yourself, but you've got to take them away from us. Curious. And yes, sir, you do need a lawyer. Where was your mask, Mr. Michael Burke? Or do they not have COVID over at Kyber Kaiser University? No, people. Mr. Burke does not have to wear a mask. The sophisticated as they would have it. Do not have to wear a mask. Only your kids must wear a mask. That's right, man. We all saw you on the news laughing, maskless. <laughs> Is this funny? You guys having fun? Y'all having fun? Yeah. Yeah. You having fun, Mr. Burt? You having fun, Mr. Barbarelli? Alexandria Ayala. Sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. Karen Brill, Marcia Andrews, Deborah Robinson, y'all think this is funny. Let me tell you something else. You will not be making your own rules here, Mr. Burt. What, did you think we all went home last Wednesday and just went to sleep? No, we saw you. And now they want to segregate us. 
I'm sure Martin Luther King would just be proud today. Do you really think you have the fortitude to go toe to toe with the parents of Palm Beach County? Because I doubt it. Because I think you're weak. I think you're all weak. And I can tell by the way you bully my kids. Well, we will not be following the rules of those who break the law. And it is you who have broken the law. Executive Order 21-175, ensuring parents' freedom to choose masks in school. And I intend to make sure that criminal charges will be attached to this order. And on that day, you will pay for your crimes. And on that day, we will begin to sweep across this great country to return freedom to all Americans as they will see what we have done here today in the name of freedom. And from behind those cold steel bars of your prison cells, you will hear those calls of freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, so there's some people in that room that have come here with the understanding that they would be safe sitting in a masked room. So I suggest those of you that have your mask under your noses, put them back where they belong or I'll have school police remove you. There are people here, believe it or not, that feel safer with everybody having a mask on. So pull your masks up or the school police will remove you from the room. The next people that want to speak are Talia Berard, Anya Doolin, Brian Vaughn, and Andrew DiLorenzo. I'm not sure who the last gentleman was. It was either Michael LeFaber or Brian Vaughn. Go ahead, ma'am. State your name. My name is Talita Berard. Good. I really don't understand why Burke, I don't even know your name. I don't have kids in school. I just hear that you said, bring the money, the lawyers, guns, and money. And after the fact that you said that we make up the rules. Ms. Berard, you're, you off, you're, you off, the, of you're off the agenda item. Speak to the agenda item or I'll turn off your microphone. Speak to the agenda item. You're here to speak on an agenda item. Speak on the agenda item. You should resign and go flip yourself off. I want her removed for that remark. School police, remove that lady for that last remark to the superintendent. Remove her from the room, please. This is not funny. Those of you that thought we're up here, this is funny. This is not funny to us. You will act civilly and stop with the shenanigans. You cannot make those kind of remarks to the superintendent or any board members. So just sit there civilly and behave yourselves or I'll have you removed. I'm not going to tell you again. I called names. The next name come to the speaker was Anya Doolin, Brian Vaughn, Andrew DiLorenzo, Sarah Terentieff. That's all right. Whatever order you come up is fine. Just state your name, please. My name is Andrew DiLorenzo. I'd like to start by thanking the parents in this room, Palm Beach County Police, Palm Beach County Sheriffs, Governor DeSantis, and the FLDOE who are helping to stand up against the medical apartheid and segregation created entirely by this school board. My Pull your mask up, sir. Pull your mask up. My family just relocated to Wellington from Seattle. The biggest driver of why we moved is the governor's mass policies have been upheld by the Attorney General and Florida Department of Education. We truly enjoyed our five-year-old son Angelo's first week of kindergarten and thought we made the right move to move to a state whose law codified the same health practices our family doctor rec recommends. Unfortunately, a handful of selfish politicians who are aspiring to boost their own careers and fame are now abusing my child daily, and we beg for your help. Someone other than a school board member forced a teacher or principal to obstruct a child's breathing as the child, parents, teachers, and principal's wishes, they would rightly and immediately be jailed for abuse. abuse. If any of you or I similarly had disobeyed state law, we would be jailed. Just because these politicians win a local election that mainly focuses on things like PTA meetings and new football uniforms doesn't make them above our legal and medical system. And I'm truly concerned for the image we're role modeling for our children if they're allowed to get away with this with this mockery of our state law, medical, and family rights. Almost no other Western nations mask young children in school, and the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control does not recommend masks for children 12 and under in a classroom setting, and no masks in any situation for children 6 and under. According to the WHO, under no circumstances should a five-year-old be wearing a mask in the rush to, allow shallow quest, or in the rush to sh a shallow quest for political fame. Our lawless school boards have completely ignored every single one of the WHO recommended guidelines for masking of children aged 6 to 11. The negative physical and emotional development problems created by masking young children are well documented, and the science behind masking is dubious at best. Even if it weren't, it would still be illegal and abusive to force 
them upon children, parents, doctors, and school, school staff, and police who have been turned unwittingly into the school board's enforcers. Officers, governors, principals, my child's unrestricted breathing and respect for the law depends on whether you decide to uphold hundreds of years of legal and health precedent or in see, instead see the strong arm of lawmaking over at a handful of middling school board members who just want a chance to be on CNN or a friendly tweet from Joe Biden. It's abusive to, it's abusive to force kids to struggle with masks to sacrifice for the sake of unvaccinated adults. Do masks reduce COVID transmission in children? Believe it or not, there is only one, one single retrospective study on the question, and its results were, of course, inconclusive. The possible psychological harm of widespread masking is even greater worry. Facial expressions are integral to human connection, particularly for young children, who are only learning how to signal fear, confusion, and happiness. Covering a child's face mutes these nonverbal forms of communication and can result in robotic and emotionless interactions, anxiety, and depression. Seeing people speak is a building block of phonetic development. It's especially important for children with disabilities such as hearing impairment or my son who speaks English as a second language. The adverse devel de 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 developmental effects of requiring masks for a few weeks are probably minor. We can't say that with any confidence when the practice stretches on for months or years. Children have been known to transmit COVID, but it's far less often than adults do. A North Carolina CDC study conducted Mr. before- Mr. Lorenzo, your time is up. Thank you. Governor DeSantis, police from both county, county and the schools- Mr. Lorenzo, your time is up. State Good afternoon, name, my name is Sarah Terentif. I have two children currently enrolled in a Palm Beach County school. Last year I had to pull my children out of school due to the tyranny in Palm Beach County. It was either comply with your mask or forced isolation with virtual learning. Mr. Burke, I understand you and this board are under a tremendous amount of pressure from both sides, but you're on the wrong side of the law. You are all in violation of Governor DeSantis's Executive Order 21-175 and HB 241, the Parents' Bill of Rights. This is our second time here this week, and we demand you end this mask mandate. You work for we the people. You're defying the Florida Department of Education and the Florida Department of Health by threatening your interventions and progressive discipline. Mr. Burke, you went on record saying that children would face punishment and could soon face isolation. Guess what? Our children cannot be punished, be subjected to bullying, harassment, discrimination, isolation, or intimidation. We do not fear you. We are not afraid of these scare tactics to comply. We will not comply. The first day of school, Boca High, there was a code yellow lockdown, a possible student on campus with a weapon. How safe are our children in schools when the possible threat can't be identified with a mask on their face? How safe are our children when they don't know what their teacher's face looks like? How safe are our children when they're covering their own face and harder to identify in a sea of children? Out of a child in America, 66, 66,667 times more likely to be sold to human traffickers than to die of COVID-19, and your masks assist in them being transported undetected and unidentified to anyone. <laughs> out of 164,000 students in Palm Beach County Schools, 11,400 opted out of facial coverings. Do any of you up there have the data to prove that those 11,000 are solely to blame for the spread in schools? I didn't think so. Proving my point, the masks don't work. You keep trying to tell us this is all about safety. This is about power, politics, and compliance. These masks do not protect our kids. You only hurt their physical, emotional, and mental health. Where you see this as a means to an end, I see it as only the beginning for the damage that you are all responsible for. Maybe you should put your mass emailing system to good use and notify parents about the antibody treatment sites going up. The one here in West Palm can see 300 people a day. This is a solution. Let's start talking about health and how to build your immune system instead of injecting your bodies with a vaccine full of harmful ingredients. You are all guilty of child abuse and this mask mandate. The parents have rights. Let the children breathe. Thanks. Quiet down so I can call the names. Quiet down so I can call the names. Do you understand, gentlemen, in the blue shirt? I can't call the names when you're clapping that loudly. Don't do it again. Michael Hugo, Mark Murray, Jameson Sotolongo. Please. Hello, uh, I'm Mike Hugo, and uh, I'm going to take a little different approach that everyone else has. Uh, they have, like, nice speeches and stuff like that. So first I'm going to say, <clears throat> I believe it was uh, Ms. Barba, thank you for at least acknowledging uh, that, you know, there could be 
uh, kids that may have medical needs uh, and a physician, a board certified physician, actually could write a letter and get somebody potentially to not wear that mask. I see most of, the, most of you guys are playing on your phones. Um, would you guys just please pay attention? So I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> ma'am, ma'am, okay. The, the ones that are paying attention, thank you. Uh, I have a four-year-old and I have a six-year-old. And uh, yesterday I got a call from the vice president of the school and out of respect, because you guys are putting them in a very tough spot, I'm not gonna say her name. Thank you, thank you. Uh, however, she was, she was definitely in a, in, a in a tough spot. And per your recommendation, she said if my four-year-old child goes to school or does not wear their mask, you will, they'll be forced to take the child eventually out of the class by the local, by the police officer, and put them in an isolation room and assume that they are COVID positive away from the teacher, away from all the children for a four-year-old. You guys are ma making that mandatory. I don't know about you, but I can't imagine anybody would feel comfortable sending a four-year-old child into the hole or into the gulags. So, and my six-year-old also has sensory deprivation issues. So we're gonna go to a uh, pediatric specialist that's board certified, and we are going to get a letter that states, based on the WHO's information, that, hey, anybody six and under should not be wearing a mask. So for you on the board, I ask, who has a current medical license that can actually determine whether a child should or should not go to school without a mask? So just for the record, nobody has their hands up, and uh, so maybe they should not be uh, determining if the ADA, which last year nobody was able to get a 504 through, through for the unmasking, because you guys have political doctors on your staff and you guys have delay tactics that keep anybody from going through that process. Corey Stroller, A.D. Moser, Sharon Vax. Hello, uh, name is Mark Murray. I live in uh, Wellington. I have four grandchildren in the schools in Palm Beach County. The one I just picked up and dropped off is the six-year-old, and uh, he's the one that reminded his parents to make sure they reviewed House Bill 241, because that's the one I want you guys to read, because I don't think any of you read it yet. And that, that would be the bill that tells you that parents have the right to the medical for all the children and you're trying to go around that now. You, your last meeting, you said you recommend that the board discuss and take legal action, if any, to challenge the recent executive order and or emergency rules of the State Board of Education or Department of Health related to COVID. Isn't that kind of backwards? I mean, it's already a rule and shouldn't, you're doing this in the wrong order. You should have uh, figured this out first prior to going against HR 241 and enacting your own rules. It was really backwards. And I'm trying to stick to the agenda. I don't really want to have to stick to it, but I was told that was what we're going to have to do. A lot of people have gone over the other stuff anyhow that I was going to say, so I won't make you listen to that again if you are even listening. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm just a minion, and you're just hearing blah, 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 probably. But anyhow, uh, under your strategic themes, positive and supportive uh, school climate, that was one of the ones on the list, uh, I believe that threatening my six-year-old grandson with isolation to put him in another room, that was talked about uh, yesterday, you were gonna take him out. The problem was you didn't have the staffing for it at his school and so it couldn't happen. That's the only thing that saved him from it. Uh, I, I don't think he'd appreciate that very much as being a positive for his education. Uh, maybe you could revisit that. Uh, and then uh, the buses, if you're so worried about the uh, COVID, you have them all stuffed into the buses and they're even sitting on the floors in the buses. I don't think that's what the CDC was really getting at. <laughs> uh, no, I won't go over that Chamber of Commerce meeting. I'll leave that one off. 
So again, if you get a chance, read that House Bill 241. Uh, you have a governor named DeSantis, <laughs> and he's in Tallahassee. Right now they're having a, a hearing, and uh, Judge Cooper is uh, presiding over that one. And he should hopefully we'll know something today. I thought maybe you'd wait for that to happen before you go through all the trouble of doing this. So we'll just see how that works out. Thank you for your time. Go ahead, ma'am. State your name, please. Hello, my name is Jamison Sotolongo. Today in the Circuit Court of Leon County. Sorry, I'm wearing a mask. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Jamison Sotolongo. Today, in the Circuit Court of Leon County, Governor DeSantis and the Commissioner of Education, Richard Cochran, are being sued by parents because they actually want, the, they want their legal rights taken away. These parents actually want the government and the school board to tell them what to do with their bodies. I'm sorry to inform this board, but we parents are here once again to express that we want to raise our children the way we see fit. I don't co-parent with the government, let alone this school board. Your mandates and restrictions, although tiresome and quite annoying, aren't going to stop me or any of us from fighting for our children's right to breathe fresh air. Forcing medical treatment on kids is barbaric at worst and a violation of their privacy at best. Questioning medical treatment is a violation of HIPAA laws. Masks are all about control and nothing but a preparation for you to implement the jab. Burke, you even stated yourself at the last meeting that you're making up rules and you all laughed about it. I don't think it's funny. Your legal counsel has even advised that you can't legally do anything to us for not wearing masks. But here you are reprimanding and bullying my kids, which goes against the student conduct code, correct? My kids have already been intimidated, harassed, and threatened if they don't follow the illegal mandates you put in place. You're forcing principals to do your dirty work while you're giving speeches to a crowd of maskless people. You are all hypocrites. These principals are giving daily announcements on the PA, indoctrinating and threatening our children into your tyrannical practices. These principals have pulled my children and countless others out of class, humiliating them in front of their peers. You're segregating them like you're doing to the other parents in the other room right now because they're choosing not to wear a mask. You're putting these kids on a stage during lunch for everyone to see and publicly shaming them. The, phys the psychological and emotional warfare you have instilled on these children and for our families is worse and will have longer lasting effects than this virus. How can kids be taught to treat people equally when you yourselves refuse to do so? Half of you aren't even paying attention. I'm still standing here and you're not even looking at me. I look forward to seeing you all in court where your mandates will be dismissed. Shame on all of you. This board is a disgrace. Hi, my name is Sharon Bax. It pains me to be standing here today and have to discuss a mask mandate issue that was already decided for us by the governor of the great state of Florida. Although my family and I are new to Palm Beach County, that doesn't mean that we haven't all done our due diligence prior to becoming residents here. Enough due diligence to know that the mask mandate that this board voted to enforce on August 18th, stripping us all of our parental right to choose for our kids is illegal. You sit here and conspire on ways to implement mandates to keep the children safe, quote unquote, and how to ensure that parents have no way to get out of them, preaching that it's the parents who want the choice, who are the ones who are somehow threatening the safety of Palm Beach County students by opting our children out of mask wearing. Yet you ignore the science that proves that masking children doesn't mitigate the spread of COVID and actually negatively contributes to their all around health. You also added a new lesson to our children's school experience last Wednesday, that breaking the law is the right thing to do. You've directed the principals and administrators to indoctrinate our kids and brainwash them with lies about how their compliance, keyword, will save lives during morning announcements and throughout the day. You've directed those same administrators to punish our children who aren't wearing masks by segregating them from their peers and their classrooms handing out in-school and out-of-school suspensions, keeping them out of intramural sports and extracurricular activities that they deserve to be a part of. 
all if they don't follow your sick and twisted do as I say and not as I do policy and break Florida state laws and the executive orders issued by Governor DeSantis. Mr. Burke, you personally stood at the Chamber of Commerce function and called for lawyers, guns, and money to help aid you in breaking the law and violating this executive order, but you have another thing coming. You have parents who won't back down, parents who will not let you or any school board member or administrator indoctrinate our kids and force them into compliance, force them to cover their faces and suffocate them under the guise of it being the right thing to do. Each and every board member that voted to break the law and strip us parents of our rights to, our, to choose for our children should be held accountable legally. Each and every administrator that carried out your plan and illegally enforced penalties on our children should be held accountable as well. Unlike the actions of this school board, us parents plan to fight your illegal mandate via legal channels. We will not teach our children that breaking the law is an acceptable course of action. Instead of meeting today and plotting ways to challenge the laws in this state, you should be meeting to figure out a way to backpedal out of this illegal mandate that you're imposing on families in Palm Beach County. I call for the res resignation of every board member who voted in favor of Time's violating up, that executive Time's order up. and the Parent Time's Bill up, of Rights in light of the circus up, Ms. Bax. Mark, turn off the microphone. Corey Strola, A.D. Moser, Mary Free. Free. Get away from the podium or you're going to be removed from the building. Officer, get her out of here. Corey Strola, A.D. Moser, Mary Fry. Good afternoon. I am Corey Strola. I'm a resident of Palm Beach County. And I'm an attorney, been an attorney for almost 25 years. And I find it a little bit ironic that you sit up there and laugh about breaking actual Florida law because you disagree with it. But you have threatened, harassed, intimidated, and bullied not only our children, but everybody in here, because if they don't follow your made up rules of decorum, you're going to kick them out and never let them speak again. That is not only hypocritical, that is weak and pathetic leadership. That is not a leader. And Mr. Burke, I look to you. Your apology was weak and pathetic. And what you said was disgusting, sir. And if you don't have the spine to resign yourself then this board should remove you and terminate you your comments yesterday get back on the, subject mr stroll judge it is judge, sorry get back on subject me. it is on subject no get mr. back burke on the apologized. get back on the agenda item i'm asking you to recall my time mr burke made a part of the agenda by publicly apologizing he's not now, part of the agenda you here on agenda item speak on the agenda right. item the agenda item is mr burke willingly and intentionally it's not the agenda law. item it's not the agenda the if mask, you don't stop i'll turn off your microphone sir, get back on the agenda your item. your vote on the mask officer he's done law. turn off the microphone turn off the microphone you're done. You're done. You're done. You're out. You're out. If, if, oh, if you're going to, okay, officers, back off a minute. If you're going to talk about the agenda item, do it. No, you didn't. I want you to challenge the governor's executive order. I beg you. I dare you. I triple dare you. Because if you've watched that testimony up in Tallahassee, those plaintiffs' experts were humiliated and eviscerated by the experts brought by Governor DeSantis. I want this board and Dr. Alonzo publicly humiliated in court, so please challenge it. Challenge it. And keep laughing about breaking the law. Because as Mr. Burke likes to cite lyrics, maybe there's a lyric you've all heard. It's called Ezekiel 2517. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the selfish, and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he in the name of goodwill and charity who shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my children. And you know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. So I don't appeal to your conscience I appeal to your souls, your eternal souls, to make the right vote and strike this down. You are harming our children. And how do we know that? The CDC and the UK and the EU have already said the children have done well through the Delta variant and should never be masked. Change it now.
Go ahead, ma'am. Stop. Go ahead, ma'am. Hi, my name is Mary Fry. I am a mother whose child was in the Palm Beach school system. I am speaking through my observations that the county is grossly abusing power and they're stealing and have stolen from the taxpaying citizens. As a multi-ethnic single mother, it perplexed me. Why are so many children eating breakfast and lunch in school? What was so different about me that I could budget a minuscule paycheck and provide for my child? Hmm. I realized it was my parents who were from communist refugee country, immigrant from South America. They instilled pride and common sense in me. When you rely on someone or something for your basic needs, you are now in their control. The yeah. school boards and unions are totally invested in that. It is hypocritical and disrespectful when you say you are concerned and care about children, so mask them up. In this building with all the training workshops, why are there so many children that are below average in reading, writing, math, science, which everyone needs to follow, and history? With all the resources, why are children in America failing and so many turn to drugs? Do not put the blame entirely on the parents and families that are working while the school system is indoctrinating their children or the children. You people that chose the education vocation have no right to complain how hard your jobs are. The hardworking moms and dads have been supportive and compassionate, but it has gotten to the point where we see this is a one-way relationship. This is abuse and needs to stop. Historically, in the end, fascism, socialism, communism does not work for the people. And as you are riding the power train, you must realize at some point you too will be kicked off. Out of concern and respect for those with a weak or compromised immune system, I, I encourage them to do what they must to stay healthy. Mask up if you feel safe. I grew up in the Northeast and I've had several bacterial issues from, we from wearing in the winter scarves covering my face. The climate here is hot and humid and being forced to wear a mask for hours is completely inhumane and an environment for bacterial growth. A cloth covering or a mask of any type is going to harm healthy children. I just want to say thank you to all the caring teachers and, administration and, and administrators that are in agreement but unfortunately are being bullied into staying quiet. We, the minority class, have been used politically. We're being bullied now, and we are opening our eyes. You people need to be fired. Yeah. 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 Kara Smith, Colton Lohman, Erica Leninger. Marietta McCarthy, Grace Greenberg, Trina Hinn. Bethany Phillips, Taryn Manders, Erica Mejia. State your name, ma'am. Grace Greenberg from Lake Worth. Go ahead. Vote no on the present proposal and amended to be fair to constituents and investors on 1.03. We are speaking, we are begging to be heard, which is like ridiculous. Give us the courtesy of giving constructive comments in a fair and just time frame, individually or even in representation, such as what you've asked us to do. If there's a group of people on the same subject, you want us to pull it and uh, have one speaker for five minutes. That's not enough to even show uh, so the problem, identify solutions, and work a proactive measure to make it happen. What I suggest is that we have town hall meetings because these uh, board meetings mean nothing. You don't listen to us, we sometimes don't listen to you. It seems like we have two agendas, two science groups. We're not on the same page. We need to be cooperative, and I think a town hall where we have the courtesy to listen to one another and make things happen on the positive. You have all broken the law. We know that. You've heard it a thousand times, so what are you going to do about it? Are you going to stay on this agenda? 
I'd like to say this, the power of words is incredibly amazing. I will say right now, we the people are strong and worthy. You are weak and worthless. You have forced these police officers, these nice men and women, really nice people, and they're doing their best to do their job, and it's wrong. How could you, how, and they just have to do it because they fear losing a paycheck. This is sick, this is not America. America is a republic. It means that there's diverse thinking, diverse ways of doing things. A democracy, not so much. If you win the election, you're stuck with it for a year, two years, four years, whatever. And you gotta work to make it change again in the next vote, the next election. In communism, there is no choice. And Barbieri, you said they have no choice. They have to follow the rules that you made up. This is not following the Parents' Bill of Rights or any other policy, positive role modeling policy. You are all despicable. Get out. State your name, ma'am. Karen Manders, Jupiter. Go ahead. All right, so a lot of people have already touched on a lot of the stuff I want to say, so I might jump around. Um, can you hear me now? Okay. Who's making those remarks back there? Would you please be quiet so she can speak? Can we start my time over again? I yes, to reset okay. her time. Thank you. Taryn Manders, I'm from Jupiter. Um, first of all, I'm a mom of three, one of which is in... Um, an elementary school in Palm Beach County right now. He's the last one in his school who has the guts, I guess, to keep the mask off. And he just actually texted me that um, the other kids that were holding strong got talked to today, and so they masked up. And he's not going to back down. Um, he said, let's go. If they want to suspend me, they can suspend me. And I hate, he's such a good boy, such a good kid. And I can't believe that I'm in this sickening position to have to walk him through this scenario, to have to walk him through this situation. It's been such a hard week for so many parents I know because we're not lawbreakers. We're not the kind that, you know, I've never been to a board meeting before. I don't want to be here, but I can't, I don't like where this is going and it's scaring me. I'm trying to raise three kids and I'm worried about their present and definitely their future. If this is the present, then the future is definitely nothing resembling America. When my child described how things are in school this week, it just sounds creepy. I can't do nothing about this, I have to do something. Um, I also wanna say that you guys brought families back to school under the premise this year that there would be no masks. Then the wording kept changing until we were left with an opt-out and now that's gone. This was subversive and this was always the plan. Do you see the hypocrisy in telling the students that they will be disciplined for insubordination if they don't wear a mask? While you and the board members are failing to follow the law, the governor's executive order, along with our parental bill of rights, the orders from the departments of health and education, are you not being insubordinate? And how should you all be disciplined? You're coercing young children into disobeying their parents. You're claiming that you know better for them than their own parents and, your te and teachers, and you're telling th the teachers are telling them so. You're bullying them into submission. You're subjecting them to ridiculous propaganda in the form of lengthy announcements in the morning and graphic presentations about mask wearing. This is something that's only seen in other countries used by the bad guys. Well, now it's being shamelessly used in our kids here in Palm Beach County. Wake up, everyone. You are the bad guys. You're making teachers and principals do your dirty work and you're gonna lose all the good ones. Your quarantine policy is absurd. I won't go into more on that because it'll take too long. But surely, won't you acknowledge that this is blatant segregation and discrimination? You school board members must have some history of the Holocaust, how it began, how it turned out, 
It began slowly in subtle ways. How can you not see the parallels in this situation? Thank you, Ms. Manders. We do Manders. not Time's consent. Up. Go ahead, ma'am. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Marita, and I'd like to begin with a prayer, please. I ask the Father to give those who cannot see eyes to see, those with ears that cannot hear ears to hear. And I pray for wisdom and discernment and understanding and knowledge in regards to the times we are living in right now. So, in the name of Jesus, I can go on for the next three minutes in regards to my education, my work background, and just life in general. I'm a mother of four. I have seven grandchildren, one on the way. I've spent 40 years combined in the healthcare system and in the education system. And guess what I found out? Children get sick. That's right. You know what? They get runny noses. They cough. They've got sore throats. They get ear infections. By golly, they throw up. They got diarrhea and the whole gamut. And you know what else I found in 40 years? They're fine. Let me explain something to you. Ask yourselves, because I'm here today not to throw a bunch of information at you because you've already gotten it. I'm here to show you a little logic and a little common sense today because I'm tired. I've got precious grandchildren in your school system and it's making me want to vomit at what they're going through. Ask yourselves, where has the flu and the cold season gone? Where has it gone? Because I'm going to tell you right now as a fact, a scientific fact, there are no tests and there is no way to make a vaccine for a disease or a virus that has never been isolated. And that is a fact. So what's going on here? Let's really think about what's going on here. Because I'm going to tell you what's going on here. This battle is not against flesh and blood. It is against powers and principalities, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. And you have a choice on this board. You are a human. They are after us. And they are after our children. And they're not getting past me. I don't know if you're going to let them get past you. But let me tell you something. You will stand before God for every decision that you make on this board. And we are saying today as the parents in this county, you can go so far and no more. The line is drawn. We are done. It's time to wake up. We can't sleep any longer. We are experiencing in this room Gestapo-like behaviors from our own police officers that I'm on my knees every day praying for. And these poor men and women are almost being controlled by God knows what to come against the very people that love and pray for them. We watched a man who wanted to just stand, just stand to listen to the meeting. He was being told you either sit or you leave. If you do not leave or if you do not sit, we will forcibly take you out of this room. And guess what happened? Bye. This poor, precious man. Thank yeah. you, ma'am. Your time is up. Thank you, Ms. McCarthy. <laughs> State your name, please. Go ahead. State your name. Bethany Phillips. I'm a resident here in Palm Beach County for over 20 years. I have three children that go to school here. Uh, the youngest one last year was in pre-kindergarten from August until May and did the full year no mask where she had to go to school. I was so proud that she could go there. And I was so proud going into this school year that my three children wouldn't have to wear a mask. And so I continued on our regular path. The school that they go to, they've been to, my oldest has been to since she was in kindergarten. Now she's in seventh grade. Um, I'd hate to extract them, but I'm willing to do that. But I'm here to fight for the kids. I'm here to fight for what's right. My best friend sent me here. His name is Jesus. Yeah. He forgives you even in this moment. And you can take this moment and turn some things around. It's never too late. It's disgusting what's happening. The segregation is true. It's happening. Children are being removed from class and they're going into a room with others that are not wearing a mask, with no teacher, no instruction, and they're just sitting there. 
they're actually having a great time because they're not doing anything. They're playing around, goofing around, not getting educated. You, the school board, that's your job. You're supposed to help our kids get educated. That's what you're supposed to do. And I'm afraid that you're just not even educated. If you were educated, then you would know all the facts and we wouldn't have to stand here and tell them to you. Okay? So you're not even doing your job. All right? Like everyone else has said, we're fed up and we're gonna protect our kids even if you're not. And they won't go to school, you won't have schools, you won't have money and whoever's talking in your ear, telling you what to do, you can't take whatever it is with you. If it's money, you can't take that with you. You only take your soul. So maybe take a good look inside and really do what's right. Our children are just that, they're not yours. If you wanna control the children, go do that with your own. We have a choice. We're not gonna back down. We're done with you. Just resign already. You're already breaking the law. I'm surprised you're not already hiding. I know on Monday you were. The officer told me when I was standing at the front door trying to get in. You wouldn't even talk to us. We're together. We're all humans. We all have families. And I'm here to not only stand up for me and mine, but for all of Palm Beach County. I took the day off. I'm a single mom. I got three kids and I need my paycheck. I'll sacrifice wearing a mask. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Michelle, Michelle Mitchell, Adam LaPierre, and Meredith Hope. Go ahead, sir. State your name, please. Good afternoon. Hi, my everybody. name is Meredith. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, ma'am. Go ahead. It's Meredith Hope, and I don't have any children in Palm Beach. I'm a concerned citizen because I'm going to have to live with these children when they get older and get part of the workforce. And to be honest, as a concerned citizen, I'm in shock about what is happening and what I've heard today. The reason I came here today is because I wanted to talk about oxygen deprivation and educate you about oxygen deprivation and what it really does to children and their cognitive abilities. O2 deprivation runs a very real risk of causing cardiac events, organ failure, bodily damage, which may be irreversible. A recent study in Europe by Dr. Marguerite Brisson states, that by rebreathing or exhaling air, you will without a doubt create oxygen deficiency and a flooding of carbon dioxide. We know that the human brain is very sensitive and children's brains are developing up until 18 years of age. There are nerve cells, for example, in the hippocampus that do not regenerate once they are damaged. However, when we have chronic oxygen de deprivation, which happens when you have children that are six hours a day without a mask, that would be something that would be chronic, all of those symptoms disappear because you just get used to it. But your efficiency will remain impaired and the undersupply of oxygen to your brain continues to progress. We know that the neurodegenerative diseases take years or decades. When you forget your phone number, that happened 20 or 30 years ago. Well, you're thinking that you have gotten just used to wearing your mask and rebreathing your own exhaled hair, air, your own CO2, the degenerative process in your brain are getting amplified as your oxygen deprivation continues. Dr. Brisson says, your children and adolescents, masks are absolute no-no. Children and adolescents have an extremely active and adaptive immune system. They need a constant interaction with micro the microbes of earth. The brain is an actual incredibly active. 
the child brain is thirsting for oxygen. The more metabolically active the organ, the more oxygen is required. Dr. McNevey did a study of 48,000 children. Zero. Thank you, Ms. Hope. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. State your name, please. Uh, my name is Adam Lapierre. Um, I'm a resident of Wellington, uh, Florida, down here, and um, we moved to where we did for uh, to be in Wellington Public School uh, because of my daughter's special needs with her speech and her hearing. And uh, it's 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 very concerned when we got board members up there that actually spoke two weeks ago that they didn't care about the medical need of any student and it should be mandatory for all. I, I absolutely think that not one of you has our best interest. There's one that actually voted against it last week and I, and I thank her for that because she was actually going off data and facts. So the one thing that I've always heard from the board up there is just it's all one-sided and it's never looked at from another side on the pros and cons, checks and balances. It's always your side and disregard the rest. And that's been my experience since I've now taken the fifth day off of work to come here and fight for my daughter who doesn't have a voice in this matter. And we got board members up there talking about, oh, my feelings were hurt. People said things to me. My daughter, her feelings are facts. Yours are not. We're adults. Grow up. If you can't handle the criticism in this position, what are we doing? Every single day in my line of work, I have to deal with criticism and put on my big boy pants and keep it going. We're talking about constantly from the board about cases. And I love what that lady said a minute ago about kids get sick. I've, been, I've never really been vaccinated in my whole life, and I've gotten sick, and I've gotten better. I'm not saying that the deaths are in vain, which one death is obviously too many, but kids are not dying from this. They're not. And there's no proven facts that these masks actually are beneficial in the spread of COVID. If you actually inhale smoke, right, and then you breathe out and just watch the microparticles, which they claim COVID is, it seeps from the mask. It doesn't help at all. Carbon monoxide and dioxide that is coming out of our mouths when we breathe, normal outside is about 200, 200 units. When you put this mask on, it jumps up to 4,000. A dangerous level is 1,000. What do you think these kids are putting back into their body for eight, seven, eight hours a day? It's not healthy. The bacteria that is building up in this all day long, because I'm so confident that they're not getting masks every 15 or 20 minutes. They're sneezing, they're coughing into it. That's what I'm concerned about. And my last point in the last 15 seconds, the reason why I'm leaning towards pulling my child out is because I don't trust you to make the right decisions for all. It's your way or the highway. Thank you. Rachel Rodriguez, Sean Sykes, Jordan Westcott. Go ahead, ma'am. State your name, please. Good afternoon, Superintendent Burke, members of the board. My name is Rachel Rodriguez. I'll try to get through this. I have a very hard time breathing in this, but um, I'm speaking today on your item BRD1. I have children, I have one child in the school system. He's in kindergarten this year. It's his first year. I want to say that you all know the board has violated the fundamental rights of parents in this county to direct the upbringing, education, and care of our children, but you've also violated the fundamental right of privacy that our children have, as well as us, in walking into schools masked. The only reason that you're contemplating mounting a legal challenge to the state agency emergency rules and the executive order 21175 is because you know that you have no legal nor constitutional position to mandate wearing masks by children, nor in fact by parents in the schools in the district. In fact, any challenge that you mount 
is a colossal waste of taxpayer money in this county. And it's an intentional effort by this board to violate fundamental rights of parents and children using the power of the judiciary. We should not have our tax dollars wasted in this manner. I don't need to go on because it's self-explanatory, but for the record, it's not just a matter of the Constitution, Article 123, indicating that we have a fundamental right to be left alone by the government and free from governmental in intrusion, which has been determined by our Supreme Court in Florida to include a fundamental right to sole control of our person and complete freedom of the person to control their body. And this means placement of masks on the face. That has been determined by the first district appellate court in deciding an issue on mask mandates in another county. Since compelling or mandating mask wearing of any Floridian is an infringement of their fundamental constitutional rights, you, not the parents, are required to prove that the mandate is justified as the least restrictive means to serve a compelling government interest. You have not done so. Moreover, as a matter of law, you will not be able to. The findings of the Board of Health at the state level and our Surgeon General have indicated that continuing COVID-19 restrictions on, on individuals with no end in sight, including the long-term use of face coverings and withdrawal from social and recreational gatherings, pose a risk of adverse and unintended consequences. There's no statistically significant evidence to suggest counties with mask requirements versus no mask requirements fared any better. You cannot, as a matter of law, say this is the least restrictive means. Sean Sykes, I have four kids. If anybody was Pull interested. Your mask up, sir. Yeah, I hear you. Pull if anybody up. was interested in how your your kids up. stay. Pull your mask up over your nose. The mic, sorry. All right, can you please stop my time again? Since Put your you've mask wasted up. 10 seconds of Put it. Put your mask up. All right, now you've wasted 13 seconds. Can you please start, restart the time? No. You knew the rule. If anybody was curious phone. how your children's day goes, if the last hour and a half was any indication, I would be pulling my kids. And that's exactly what I did with these two. So, you know, I come to up. these meetings. Pull your mask up. Man, you are on it, aren't you? I come to these meetings, and, you know, and I hope that the next time I come that we're going to be better, right? So, Frank, you stand up there, and, and I feel like you're sympathetic at times because I've seen your interviews, and, and I see you talk, and I say, you know, it can't be political, and you've said that the other day. And it's funny because the same thing you said the other day was this. You said that you know that you're breaking the law with the Governor DeSantis's rule. So what kind of example are we setting for our kids in your public school system? We began with um, the lady from District 2 talking Point of about... Order, Mr. Chair, the commenters will address the board as a whole. I'm sorry? Uh, I'm sorry. So the woman from District 2 had... Uh, continue, was, continue with your agenda item on masks. Yes, I'm going there with rules no, you're and not. following continue, rules. Continue with your agenda item on okay. that. Okay, so if we're going to follow rules, okay, then we need to be following what the governor has put in place, not what the kangaroo court decides that what's going to happen on a daily basis. Because as we know, which I believe that you're in over your head, Mr. Burke, I truly do, you're making up rules as you go along, okay? We have to be better. We have to do better. Um, I have my own district rep has never responded to an email. Okay, just really curious about why I live in the heart of Palm Beach Gardens and I have three children in Palm Beach Gardens and I have never heard back from any email that I have sent to you. I Continue. heard back from Mrs. Andrews, okay? I don't know how we can't, we have to communicate, okay? We have to do better, we have to communicate. Last board meeting, there is nothing, Ms. Bernard, there is nothing legally you can do to force a student to wear a mask. So I'm standing here curious as to why we're segregating children, why we're yelling at them, why we're taking them out of school, why are we calling parents to come pick them up? Can you just give me a brief uh, response on why that's happening? Anybody, feel free. No, because you don't know. You know what's wrong. 
Okay, I know you're checking the time, I get it, and I understand that everyone's on a time clock, and as soon as that hits zero, you're gonna cut me off, and that's fine. But at the same time, we have the power, we're gonna pull the kids, and eventually you're just not gonna have enough kids to go to. Thank you. A.D. Moser. Hello, my name is A.D. Moser. I'm a 59-year-old proud mother of four and grandmother of nine. My heart cries out to you to let children be children as we're including you who had the privilege to living as a child, to love, to hug, to play, and to have no fear. These opt-out options being denied from parents is a communist move. Mr. Bar the person leading, I had to ask my aunt who you were. Uh, I literally left my home, I wasn't even gonna come to get here when I kept hearing this meeting online and how belligerent you are when you speak to these passionate parents. You should be ashamed of yourself. For the last 18 months, our family, including my father, who's 98 years old, proud American and World War II vet who fought for our liberties, never once did we social distance, never once did I keep any of his great-grandchildren away from hugging him and kissing him and loving on him. And guess what, we're all living healthily 18 months later without masks, without vaccines, without anything that was recommended by the CDC and by Fauci and those in my family that chose to follow, two died from COVID. And they were all following wearing masks, putting hand sanitizer on and all that baloney that was recommended that, as you know, lowers the immune system. How can any normal person that has, that's not visually impaired not see through your hidden agenda, money-hungry, grabbing narrative to prolong this so-called emergency? Yesterday at the Tallahassee Judicial Court, a child psychologist testified and said that the rise in childhood mental disorders from masking are abusive. There is zero, zero studies that show masks prevent a darn thing. My family grew up in free Cuba, and let me tell you what happened in free Cuba. When communism and socialism took over, no freedom of speech, no freedom of parental choice, no freedom of religion, no freedom of association, no freedom of the press, and we know what's happening today in Cuba. I can't believe that after 18 months you all are still dealing with this nonsense. You all know the statistics. You know that a mask doesn't prevent anything because if it did, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be going through this again because if not, everybody would be healthy and everybody would be alive, but instead, we're being fed lies after lies after lies after lies. Police officers, I love you, I respect you, but you know what, you need to arrest all of them because they're all against the law, breaking the law, and, uh, and you should be ashamed of yourself. Thumbs up, Ms. Moser. Yes, I know. Anna Trunova, Everett Cooper, Osvaldo Del Rio. <laughs> Go ahead, sir, state your name, please. Osvaldo Del Rio. Osvaldo, Osvaldo Del Rio. I'm a parent of four kids enrolled in Palm Beach County Schools. And not once in my life I thought I would be speaking to any of you board members. This is not something I want to do. I never spoke it in front of any board members and never in front of a crowd. But this is ridiculous. What you guys are doing, it's illegal. It is not something that has any science behind that's going to help any of our kids. We, the people here in this room, are requesting that you follow the governor's orders. I haven't heard anything different from anyone else present, and you guys are here for us. Not for special interest in whatever agenda, God knows where you guys are getting it from, and following whatever guidelines, and I don't know what's driven your incentives to uh, make up the rules. 
um, the law says you can't force the kids to wear them and you can't discipline them from wear them, not wearing them. Your legal counsel stated that in the last meeting. So why are our kids being punished, intimidated, segregated, and bullied by other kids, by the teachers, by the principals, and all the staff members? This is ridiculous. It is ridiculous to push a mandate on a mask that clearly is not effective. You guys are, were elected to represent us. I would really like to know the actual numbers of students that tested positive that were wearing a mask versus the students that weren't. Let's begin with the uh, people don't wear their mask effectively, you know? So to pursue anyone to wear it, it's ridiculous. We all touch everything else in our mask. Take it off, put it back on, no one hand sanitizes their hands, and they handle everything else. You know, let's, let's look at common sense here. Yesterday, Mr. Burke wasn't wearing a mask with a crowd full of people. I mean, a, a room full of people. And uh, after his uh, little gathering yesterday, now the parents feel threatened by his requests. Time's up, thank you. Karen Holm, Gina Pleasanton. <laughs> Go ahead, ma'am, in the yellow. Go ahead. My name is Anna Trinova. I'm a new resident of Palm Beach County. I have um, two kids in the Palm Beach schools, a first grader and a junior. Um, I have three points to make. Um, first of all, you're in a blatant violation of parental bill rights that states in the section 10402 that important information relating to a minor child should not be withheld either indeterminately or purposefully from his or her parent, including information relating to the minor child's health, be well-being education, while minor child is in custody of school district. Section 10.14.03 reads, the state and any political subdivision, any other government entity, any other institution might not infringe on fun fundamental rights of a parent to direct the upbringing, education, health care, and mental health of his minor child without demonstrating that such actions are reasonable and necessary to achieve a compelling state interest in, and that such action is narrowly tailored and is not otherwise served by less restrictive means. You are in violation of both of the sections by failing to provide to parents any information not limited to effectiveness, approved use, any side effect of the medical devices, as you call masks, as this information directly relates to the health care of minor children. You have not demonstrated the placement of medical, this medical device of mask is a reasonable and necessary, nor have you provided any less restrictive means for us. You are thus in violation of the parental right. My second point is FDA and HHS has in, for informed consent for placement of any medical device, which includes masks on minor children. You have to provide understanding of nature of the procedure or device to be implemented understanding of the risks, benefits, over reasonable alternatives in understanding of those risks and benefits of the alternatives. It also states that consent cannot be obtained through coercion, no undue influence on punishment or reward. You have not provided any of it, and you actually are also denying entrance to schools and education is a form of coercion. There also, no parents have gave you permission to put those medical devices on our children. Last but not least, quoting from FDA, face mask, face covering, including cloths, surgical masks, and respiratories are considered medical devices when used for the purpose of preventing a spread of infectious material during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Therefore, you as a board, individually and as a group, are mandating a placement and use of these medical devices on children. If you're acting in a capacity of a medical provider, you have to be held to the standards of such. Last but not least. Thank you, ma'am. Karen Holm, Gina Pleasanton, Barry Silver. Go ahead, ma'am. Can I go? I was called before. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. My name is Michelle Mitchell. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay. I am the mother of one ESE student in the Palm Beach County School District. I pulled her out last year due to, due to the fast face masks and put her in a private school that was mask free. When masks became optional this year, I decided to put her back into the school district. My daughter was so happy to return and see familiar faces. The morning after masks were mandated last week, I told my daughter what happened and that we are considering pulling her out. She started hysterically crying. My child has a speech delay and hearing loss. Putting a mask over her face is counterproductive. She was told by a five-year-old to put a mask on to keep her safe. Kids are being brainwashed and afraid of unmasked children. My child is healthy and if she is sick, I keep her home. My healthy child was also quarantined last week. I was told that she can come back this Friday and got a call last night at 9 p.m. that she can come back to school today. Nobody asked any questions if she's sick, if she's okay, if she has symptoms. I mean, nothing makes sense. I did get a medical exemption for my daughter, but it is still has to be approved by her IEP team. I am afraid to send her back to school since she was already being singled out in class before the mandates. I also worry what is being taught in schools about masks and it, if it will make my daughter feel like she is a threat. With all medical interventions come risks and benefits. It should be up to each individual to decide if the risks outweigh the benefits. Medicine is not one size fits all, and face masks, forced face masks have no place in a free society. I am asking you to please keep face masks optional for everyone. I support medical freedom and the freedom to, of choice. We should have the right to choose what is best for our families. Thank you. Hold off, Mr. Silver. The lady in blue, go ahead. I called your name first, go ahead. Go ahead, ma'am, in the unmasked room, go ahead. Hi, my name is Gina Pleasanton. I'm gonna speak really loud because I know I've heard some people aren't looking at the speakers and some want to look at their phone and not listen. So I'm just going to speak real loud, so no matter what you're doing, you can hear me. I believed at one time all of you public officials have joined the school board to be a positive force in our child's life. However, by requiring and mandating masks, not only are you overstepping authority, but you are ignoring true medical facts. The cross-contamination of germs is because these hold bacteria, mold, fungus, and toxic waste. You should listen to what the words of Fauci was when he said the masks don't work. I believe it's like throwing sand through a chain link fence. Let me remind you, kids get sick every year, especially when school starts. Parents have authority over their children and for you to make your authority over parents, what are you teaching the kids? that our voices as parents don't matter. We are the people who have our own morals, values, and beliefs to raise our children to our standard. And we know how these students being muzzled is not healthy and does not stop the spread. If you are worried, then homeschool your children. I decided to homeschool my children when this all started, because I could see this agenda a mile away. I knew it wasn't going to end. It was only going to get worse. Fortunately, I am able to do this for my family. So I am here now to help be a strong, unafraid voice for the children who need us to speak up for them. Stop the mandates. We won't submit to the discrimination and dismantling of you pinning us against each other. Sanders gets to push his uh, criminal act of y'all breaking the law, you'll be very sorry this day happened and you'll be uh, on the news one day in handcuffs and we'll get to clap. 
Go ahead, Mr. Silver. Mr. Silver, go ahead. I came here to thank you for trying to protect the kids. I didn't realize I would be responding to what I've just heard. I'm a civil rights attorney. I fought throughout my legal career for civil rights. No parent has the right to send their children in without a mask to spread disease to other children and their parents and their family members who may be immunocompromised as I am. My wife teaches in the public school. Quiet. She should not have to subject herself to people who have zero knowledge of science and have been brainwashed and deluded by pseudoscience because she is a teacher and she has the right to teach without risking her life. Nobody has the right, and in the Children's Bill of Rights, the Parents' Bill of Rights, it says that you have no right to do anything that could jeopardize the life of others. These parents, all parents, do not have the right to send their child in naked. They, have the, they do not have the right to send their child in smoking. They do not have the right to send in their child and do drugs. They do not have the right to do these things. Sadly, they have the right to do that to their own children. But they do not have the right to send their children in to spread disease to all the other kids. Florida has one of the highest death rates in the, in the country because we have a science denier as a governor. Every state where they deny science has death and destruction all over the state. It is sad to see. And what's even sadder is that children of these parents are now subjected to being deluded and brainwashed by their parents and also to be spreaders of disease. There is a pandemic of ignorance, of incivility, of death-related behaviors going on by the same people who deny climate, climate change, who deny science, they are denying science here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll clear the room. Stop. The lady in the red, second row. Lady in the red, second row. Officer, take her out. Lady in the red, second row. I have sued this school board on more than one occasion. Yes, her. Take her out. I'm sorry, Mr. Silver. Hold on. Stop the clock. I told you all, when somebody's speaking, you'll be quiet. Restart the clock. Start it where it's at, Mr. Silver. Go ahead. And, and another thing. Nobody should ever compare what is going on here to the Gestapo or the Holocaust. That's obscene. If this was the Gestapo, these people would have been executed long ago. And it's an insult to the memory of those people who perished in the Holocaust to make such a vile despicable and outrageous accusation, and it's even worse that even one person would clap and support that. I have filed a lawsuit on behalf of Reverend Dowling and his three children, one of whom has asthma. We are filing that lawsuit. It's been filed. I invite Palm Beach County School Board to join me and my fine plaintiff in suing DeSantis. He is violating Florida law because he's violating the Constitution in three different ways by his actions, and you are standing up Time's for the rights up, of Mr. parents. Silver. Thank you. Time's up. Aubriana Johnson, Maria Pilato, Melinda Rockwell. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, go ahead. State your name, please. Hi, my name is Maria Pilato. I normally don't speak in front of boards only once I did. Um, I'm here because I am a proud grandmother of three, two in the state of New York, one here in Florida. My granddaughter here in Florida has special needs and I don't see where the public school has done anything for my granddaughter so she is in a private school where we need to pay for her education and I am high in education. The one thing I want to tell every one of you on that board, I see some of you are not looking at us when we're speaking. I have sat there for, this is probably my third time, and I come to get educated to hear your side and the side of the people, okay? I see that a lot of you never recognize anybody that's coming to this podium because they're saying things that you do not like. I have sat there, and I've watched you all of you, when you, Mr. Barberi, 
have put out the rules. I have listened. I have gone with your rules, okay? I, right now, am going to say one thing because I am a very Catholic person. He who is without sin cast that first stone. These children are our futures. I had a, a written thing that I was going to write, but now I'm speaking from the heart. The kids are our future. We would like to see our kids get raised, go through school, become someone just like all of you are somebody, okay? They cannot do that in school if they are being criticized because they cannot wear, because they have to wear their masks. You are against this mandate with Governor DeSantis. We all have freedom of speech. We can say what we, can, what we want to say. We are in a free country. This is America. We are not communist. I, as a child, my parents brought me to the United States of America, God bless it, to get a better education, to get a better life, to get out of communism, out of a country, out of communism. I was seven years old. I had to learn everything from my parents, my father who fought in World War II, okay? These kids do not need to be masked. They need to be taught. And I feel bad for each and every one of you up there, but if you are without sin, cast that first stone to any of these parents who've come here and are advocating for their children, okay? I have sat here and I've given you guys the benefit of the doubt, but I am saying that you guys don't give them the benefit of the doubt. Thank you. Aubriana Johnson, then Trina Hinn. Go ahead, go ahead, ma'am. Hi, I'm Aubriana Johnson, and I'm 11 years old. In this room, I had to watch three men forced out here just for standing up. When was that ever told in here that you can't stand up? It scared me to see this is the world my siblings are growing up in. When my sister sees someone with a mask, the first thing she says is, ill yucky masks. If you're sick, stay home. If you're not sick, go, go. Go live your life. But don't make the people who are not sick get sick by wearing one. They do nothing. So why, why wear the mask just now? Just how we will not stop coming until people no longer have to wear one. We the people now know our rights, so stop calling kids grandma and grandpa killers. Stop the masks, stop fear, stand up for yourself, stand up for your kids. Now do it now. Stand up for the kids, not people who don't care about the kids. You are the people who don't care about the kids. If you're making them wear masks, get muzzled and don't care. When did a kid ever have to wear a mask? When it was flu season, did a kid have to wear a mask? No. Did they stay away from people? No, they didn't. Did they social distance? No. So what's, how is this any different from that? Is it because it's a bigger virus? It's pretty much almost the same thing. So let kids live their lives. Let people live their lives. We are one nation under God, not under people who don't even care about God. If you're a Christian, you should know that if you go to church, if you read the Bible, it says that there were tons of people who were with each other. There were parties. There weren't staying away from people. I am religious and I am proud to be a patriot. I am proud to be near God, near Jesus. And I am proud to be with my family. And these people in here are great people. And if you can't, if you don't like that, then I guess you don't care about anything. Thank you for your time. If you even listened at all to what I had to say or what any other people had to say. Trina Hinn, Melinda Rockwell, and Colton McCormick. Hello, how are you? Um, 
good afternoon to all the patriots and others. Um, I was raised in New York and Palm Beach, and my family's been here since the 1920s. I own several homes. I'm a taxpayer, Palm Beach. Parent and an aunt and concerned Palm Beach are here and opposed to this BRD1, and I am the daughter of the American Revolution. I'm opposed to suing Governor DeSantis. You say follow the law, but you're going against the law. I'm sorry, I just ran off the tennis court with Mike, but I felt it was so important that I share my thoughts. And I believe this board has lost, lost its compass and its boundaries. I have never seen such an arrogant, belligerent, and vulgar opening by Frank Barbieri. I don't know who you think you are, Mr. Barbieri. I don't know who pays your salary, who you think pays your salary, but we do. It's purely political theater, and you even wheeled in that little man, the civil rights liar, I mean lawyer, whose wife should stay at home if she is that immunocompromised. She is the problem. The rest of the children are not. You have no authority to sue our blessed Governor DeSantis, and you go against his, man to go against his mandate. It is simple political temper tantrum by the board who would have preferred a lefty lackey governor. Governor DeSantis acted on behalf of his constituents, who is defending parents' rights and not buying into the color revolution or your takeover by the likes of this healthy and attractive board who is in temporary power. I'm the great-granddaughter of the former lifetime chairman of the American Cancer Society and the chairman, former chairman of the board of what is now the Pfizer Big Pharma Corporation. So this board doesn't know any more than I do about the business of pushing an exaggerated virus, about bribes of insurance companies, and a push to vax or the agenda. I am still living off of this Big Pharma, and I know a con job when I see one. Governor DeSantis mandates for the parents they have data, you have data. Does this board really expect us to believe that you care about our children more than the parents? You are insinuating that the parents are less fit or caring than this board. I'm privileged to have attended the top private schools my whole life, including boarding school, college in Switzerland, and Columbia University. The one rule in our family is we stay with independent schools so as to avoid power-hungry, quasi-literate, like your esteemed board. Sorry to inform you, but I've listened, having mask listened up. to your English, your I would up. never ever send a child to public school in Palm Beach County. This board has no authority to sue our governor. It is a slippery slope toward the Wall Street friendly forced vaccines and becoming New York. We wonder who is behind this. It gives you this I can't be fired smug attitude. I encourage every parent to walk out of school and arrange for homeschooling. I also might suggest a few of you check your own health while you're resigning. You do not even speak correct English. It is an embarrassment. Palm Beach has gone to hell. And if this is what the best we can produce, everybody needs to leave or pull your children out. Thank you. Go ahead, lady in red, go ahead. Go ahead. First of all, I would like to uh, say that what are we teaching here? What are you teaching kids and parents? What's your name, ma'am? I'm sorry. You What's your name? What's your name, ma'am? Yes, you can speak. Is, my, my name is Trina Heen. All right, start her clock again, Mark. Uh, my question is, what are we teaching here, parents and kids? You teach them to violate the law because you put on an agenda. How do we go around our governor's uh, executive order. Well, first of all, you mislead everybody because this is not about executive order only. There is P Parents' Bill of Rights, which you completely ignored and violated on numerous uh, items. And you, um, and uh, secondly, I would like to say that I have bachelor in law and I can assure you that uh, that there's no point to talk to you anymore because I consider you a criminal after your act, which we watched for 20, 20 months. I address the speech to parents just like yourself. We are here for safety of our kids. But masks, tests, and experimental shots become political problem because when, we, when it comes to science, safety, logic, law, this school board failed to provide parents with any reliable independent data. And now uh, this school board violates law for ideological political sham. I would like for parents to stop following the agenda and apply the no, uh, uh, use the time to learn new law, knowledge and research biological engineer Fred Corbin, who leaked Pfizer documents that uh, about COVID-19. Listen to Nobel Prize winner and inventor of PCR test, Kerry Mullis, 
who uh, long before 2020 exposed Fauci and his criminal schemes on fu how fooling he was fooling masses by misusing PCR tests. And that's what we had this September or this August when you created the sham with new COVID spikes. They are not existing. Um, uh, research harmful harm of ethylene oxide placed on your blood during the swab test. Listen to real Patrick King, who proven in court that COVID-19 vi virus was never isolated, never identified by science anywhere in the world. Yes, COVID-19 uh, COVID exists, and more likely it, was, it is a biological, um, biological uh, weapon used against uh, people in the world. Learn about treatments that you hide from people instead of forcing vaccines and uh, quarantines. You should tell people and parents that we have treatments, and I used it on myself. COVID was just like a flu, just like millions of us. We had it, we survived it, and it was nice, but you didn't tell anybody about this. Listen to the senior industrial hygienist, Kristen Megan Kelly, she, uh, to get knowledgeable about preventive uh, measures. Unite with Facebook, Unmask Kids, and PVC and uh, uh, palmbeachcountyjuralassembly.com. We have law, science, and dignity on our side. Lawyers are filing, filing a law, class, uh, lawsuit against this criminal board. Our union provides strong support for each other and will make you feel empowered. Stop being scared. Most of parents are not even aware of their rights because, because you mislead them with your agendas. Uh, research official CDC data proving that the numbers of COVID deaths used to scare you purposely, it was untreated pneumonia, heart failure, etc. And after time's up, ma'am. Time's up. Go ahead, sir. State your name, please. My name is Colton. I'm a student at Seminole Ridge High School. Can you hear me now? There we go. My name is Colton, and I'm a student at Seminole Ridge High School, and I'm appalled by the actions of the Palm Beach County School District. Not only have you violated my rights, but you've gone against the state executive order. You are in violation of executive order 21-175, which gives parents the right to choose whether their child wears a mask. You're also in violation of the Parents' Bill of Rights, which gives parents the, the right to decide their child's health care, and you're also going against Florida Department of Education. I am here today to speak on behalf of myself and many other students in Palm Beach County who are being denied their rights. It is not up to you to decide if I wear a mask or not. That is a personal decision. Today, I was removed from class and taken to in-school suspension for not complying with the mask mandate. They segregated me into my own room and told me that if I don't comply tomorrow, my punishment will worsen. The only issue it the only issue is if I recall from last week's meeting, you you guys said the Palm Beach County School District said that schools can't force child to wear a mask and if given a punishment, you guys may face legal issues because parents and students, you guys may face well guess what? You will face legal issues because parents and students have had enough. Today I have been punished for not wearing a mask, and you, the Palm Beach County School District, are responsible for this. I will not allow Palm Beach County School District to tell me my rights because those rights are mine and mine alone. I will not bow down, I will not muzzle up, and I will not comply. Today I am calling out on all parents to vote you out, to stand up against this mandate, and to stand up for your rights and your freedoms. Don't comply. Colton, 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 Colton. What was your last name? I have two Coltons on the list. Could you tell me your last name, please? Colton McCormick. Okay, thank you. I've called all the names on our list. If, if I called your name, come up to the podium now. All right, the IT department can start the recorded messages, please. We have one hour and 51 minutes of recorded messages. Hello, my name is Kelly Weesey, and I'm calling in regards to the special meeting called for on August 25th, 2021. I'm calling to tell you to not take legal action against recent executive order 21-175, ensuring parents' freedom to choose masks in school. The Biden administration issued unscientific and inconsistent recommendations that school-age children should wear masks. The Florida Department of Health will enter rulemaking and collaboration with the Florida Department of Education to protect parents' freedom and to choose whether their children wear masks. Let's face the facts. COVID and its variants have a less than 1% chance of killing children. 
masks restrict breathing and hinder social emotional development on top of various health implications when used for eight hours a day, up to five days a week. We are not going to back down. You guys work for us, and if you continue to use your power for tyrannical purposes, we will replace you immediately. If parents want to mask their kids, they have the choice. That's the point. We, the taxpayer and parents, demand you obey the law and do not take legal action against us. And to let the parents parent. Keep masks optional. Thank you. My name is Darla Zuberg, and I am commenting on the action item in regards to the recent executive order and emergency rules of the State Board of Education. And I would like to clarify how segregating students into a separate room for virtual instruction qualifies as effective and relevant instruction that will meet the need of my student, of my child. Hi, this message is in regards to the board meeting um, to discuss policy 1.03. Also new business item, consider challenge to executive order and emergency rules. My name is Jamie Shields. My daughter goes to Citrus Cove Elementary. Um, my family and I decided to opt out in the mask wearing. We moved to Florida this past year to hopefully give our children a more normal way of life from the state that we previously lived in. We hadn't had any issues the first two weeks of school. However, when the new mandate came out and it was going to require that our students and our children wear masks, we continued to write an email and a letter to the school saying that we will not require our children to wear masks due to the governor's policy that he put in place, giving parents the right to determine whether their child had to or was not going to be wearing masks. We continued to follow that path and we sent our six-year-old daughter to school on Monday. We walked her up. She was approached by two teachers asking to put a mask on. My husband continued to say that she would not be wearing a mask and that um, anything that they wanted to discuss should come directly to the parents, not her. The principal overheard this. We. We're told that she would not be denied entry into the school without a mask on. We turned around, she walked into the school. When we picked her up, she was in a mask. She was also very upset. She struggles with breathing, focusing, headaches, nauseousness, anxiousness. Um, very upset when she got into the car. She was told that as soon as she went inside and we left, that she was made to put a mask on. She does not argue, she respects adults. So of course she listened and said that her parents said that she didn't have to. However, it was a new rule for the school. We tried to send her again on Tuesday, that would be today, with a new email, a new letter, and one with her in her pocketbook to not be asked to put on a mask, that it was against our rights and we chose to have her not wear one. However, she was so upset, barely sleeping last night, chose to just wear the mask because she didn't want to be singled out, she didn't want to be embarrassed, and she didn't want to get in trouble. This is very upsetting coming from a lot of background in child development and the importance of facial and the ability for these children to actually breathe fresh air. Hi, board members. This is Angie Wegner. My daughter attends Bach Middle School. I appreciate uh, you moving forward with mandatory masking without a parental opt-out. Please don't further weaken the policy by allowing opt-outs with merely a doctor's note or a medical professional's note. I've observed with my own eyes chiropractors offering to write notes for conditions like asthma or bronchitis over telehealth for a $200 fee. This is essentially a get out of masking card for anyone who wants to use it. Why would you give these amoral individuals an opportunity to make money while harming the bulk of the student population in schools where these sham notes are accepted? If kids truly have issues, they can go through the established process and be able to document these issues over a period of time. Please don't weaken the policy and 
keep it as was approved at the last meeting. Thank you so much for all you do. Have a good day. Good morning. My name is Christy Breslaw. I am leaving a comment for the August 25th meeting, uh, allowing opt out for masks with a doctor's note only. I want to express my extreme concern about any type of opt out for masks. As we know, masks work and prevent the spread of COVID-19. I am high risk as is my mom who's currently undergoing chemo. By opting out of the mask mandate, you put us at risk in the community, not just the children in the high school. There are still a huge portion of kids that cannot be vaccinated and science has proven that masks work. If we just look at the 50 fold increase in cases in just the first two weeks of school versus all of last year's school year. Please leave the mask mandate. And if the policy remains that a 504 or ADA exemption is needed, they should be wearing masks until the case is proved for the exemption. They shouldn't be allowed to go maskless until their plan is reviewed. As we know, that can take months. I beg you, to keep the mask mandate in place and do not allow opt out with a doctor's note only. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tammy Lane. I'm a parent in Palm Beach County. I have two students, one attending Jupiter Middle and one attending Jupiter High. Both of my children were homeschooled for the entirety of last year. I sent them back to the classroom at the beginning of this year so that they could have social experiences with their friends. Both of my children are home sick due to COVID positive cases in their classroom. Um, I was hopeful to bring them back to school since the mask they will implement it again. Agenda number 12, allowing a doctor's note, will ensure that many parents forego the mask mandate I am against this. Please keep it as a 504 or an IEP plan only. Thank you. Have a nice day. Christine Danishevsky on the new business for the special meeting. I wanted to attend in person to congratulate you on a job well done, but unfortunately I cannot attend today. You have accomplished a great deal in the first two weeks of school. For starters, you did a great job of getting families back to school by dangling the opt-out of mask wearing carrot in front of parents and then quickly pulling it away. You gave parents a false sense of security with the carrot as parents were aware of their rights guaranteed by the governor, although the Constitution already gives us those rights. Which brings me to the second kudos. You found a way to completely ignore the governor's executive orders in a sneaky way and take a parent's right to take care of their children the way they see fit. You see, children naturally look at teachers and principals as authority figures and trusted adults. So when you insist that they disobey their parents and go against their parents' wishes and the law, they feel no alternative. They have an internal desire to fit in and please a teacher. After all, teachers are in sense caregivers throughout the day and are in charge of their grades. This is a type of bullying and an abuse of power. And congrats, you have pitted parents against schools, teachers against students, students against students, parents against parents. All of this leads to a complete and utter disruption of learning. The focus is no longer on learning. These children are now focused on the consequences they are threatened with if they don't comply. Nothing you do makes sense. Did you ever contact, trace, or quarantine healthy children due to the flu? Newsflash, the flu takes more lives of children than COVID. Do the research. Oh, I forgot you don't do any real research. Suicide has taken more lives of children than COVID, and we saw that increase this past year. Vaping is more dangerous than COVID for our children, and so is mask wearing. If you know anything about children, you would also know that a mask is another way for an already insecure or depressed child to hide from the world. Children are complying for several reasons. They like hiding. They feel bullied by you and are afraid of punishment, or they have been scared to death by their parents and the mass hysteria. The children are not at risk. The masks don't work anyway. Do the real research, but I know you won't. 
Don't make students feel like they are responsible for everyone's health to ease your fears. They are not. There is no longer an end game. You are abusive and not at all informed. The school climate is the opposite of positive and supportive. One more lesson on logic. If you quarantine healthy child B, just in case they caught something from sick child A, then you should also be quarantining all of the children that healthy child B was close to just in case they do have it, and so on and so on. Otherwise, your contact tracing and stay-at-home directives have absolutely no logic at all. If you do not see the stupidity in that, then you do not deserve to be on a board of education. Unmask our children. Good morning. My name is Larissa Cito. I have two children in the public school system, one in elementary school and one in middle school. My topic is the mask mandate. Under Governor's Orders 2021-175 has made it the parents' right to choose for their children's health. I strongly agree with this as 504 and disabilities aren't the only reason why some children can't wear masks. For example, my daughter was viciously attacked by a dog. The dog ripped part of her face, causing numerous stitches. Wearing a mask creates a hostile environment for her. Under your current policy, no physician, not even our own, will write a letter because you have stated that it has to be because of a disability. You are harming our children. It is our right as parents to make these decisions for our children. Please. Consider this because lawsuits will be pending. Thank you. Hello, my name is Wendy Amato. I have a child in the public school system in Palm Beach County. I am calling about agenda, agenda item 12. I want to say that I do very strongly believe that um, we should not be allowing uh, parents to allowed to opt out with a doctor's note only. Um, I can say that there is a very well organized group of parents uh, who want to opt out and they, have, they are working with a small group of doctors who are willing to just write a doctor's note. Uh, I do think that it is very, very important to ensure that the policy remains in place for the 504 or ADA exemptions only uh, because I think that Although there are some very valid reasons, I think those exemptions should be vetted, and I don't think that it should be as easy as asking a chiropractor to write a doctor's note. I think that there will be a lot of abuse in that regard, and so I feel very strongly that the policy should remain in place. Thank you very much. Hello, this is Robert Rosetto. I'm a father of a fifth grader in Palm Beach County School District, specifically at JC. Mitchell Elementary School. Um, I was happy when I was under the impression that students were not going to be required to wear a mask going back to school this year. Uh, then two days before school started, I got an email that masks were now mandatory, but there was an opt-out option for parents who sent in a letter. I sent in a letter as it is my belief that it is more beneficial for my son not to wear a mask than to wear one. He has actually already had COVID and has the antibodies. He is only 10 years old and is not eligible for a vaccine. Nor do I believe he should get one since he has the antibodies. I was very upset to find out that on August 18th, the Palm Beach County School Board went directly against the executive order 21175 and mandated masks to all students regardless of parent choice. The Parents' Bill of Rights, House Bill 241, and the Executive Order 21-175 by Ron DeSantis, our state governor, gave parents the freedom to choose whether their children wear masks in school. I believe that the school board's mask mandate is unlawful and is in violation of our freedom and rights to choose the best health care for our children. My son does not wish to wear a mask, does not like to wear a mask, and this past Monday when he was forced to wear a mask to enter school, he claimed he couldn't breathe, he couldn't focus, he felt nauseous, 
He wanted his teacher to call me to pick him up. The teacher refused. He went to the nurse's office. All they did was send him back to school and into class and make him wear the mask for the rest of the day. He is not comfortable doing this. He does not feel well doing this. It is not hurting anyone by him choosing not to wear a mask. If people wish to wear masks, that is their decision. If parents believe it's in the best interest of their child to wear a mask in class, that is up to them. My son does not, and I do not want him to. This is our personal choice and our personal freedom. The mandate is unlawful and goes against our state governor's executive order. I hope the board takes into consideration the parent's choice and freedom and allows us to keep our children unmasked. Thank Hello, Superintendent Burke and board members. My name is Caroline Kennedy. I am the mother of three children in the Palm School District. I have two in Dwyer High School and one in Beacon Cove. My child uh, has a 504 plan and he has asthma. Um, he has no problem wearing his mask. So I'm calling in regards to agenda item 12 um, in regards to mask exemptions with the doctor's note. Please throw that out. Um, I have seen on social media where there are parents who have no real medical issues with their children looking and searching for a doctor that will sign off on a doctor's note so that their children can go to school maskless. It is very irresponsible of them. Um, you, we are all in this pandemic together. We need to protect one another, uh, especially now when all children are required to go to school. The schools are packed. The transmission rate is out of control. As you can see, lots of children are quarantining since the first week of school. So please throw out agenda item 12 um, with the, you know, with the mask exemptions. It should not be needed. If my child that has asthma and a 504 plan is happily wearing his mask, then anybody else should be able to do the same. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Hello, I am speaking on behalf of the BRD1 agenda item, which is to challenge the executive order. My name is Heather Hackett and I am a parent of three children. Two currently attend Banyan Creek Elementary in the gifted program and my oldest is in a private school. All three of my daughters are straight A students, rule followers and have zero disciplinary problems. I, have a, I feel a strong responsibility to speak today because we feel that our freedom and rights are being threatened by a school board that does not want to adhere to the governor of Florida's executive order. I have four points to make. First, you, the school board, are breaking an executive order and taking away our freedom. Our daughters are not. We are, we are following the executive order that was put into place to give us the freedom to choose whether we feel it's necessary for our children to wear masks. It is not legal for a school to punish my child for choosing not to wear a mask. Our school has a dress code and rules that children must follow such as no bullying or swearing, yet these rules are broken daily and nothing is done about it. Second, a cloth mask is not going to stop the particles of any virus from infecting someone. I'm sure many people have sent you the science on this. I know kids who wore N95 masks last year that still got the virus and spread it to other kids, probably at lunch when they are allowed to take them off. Third, the flu, suicide, car accidents, heart disease, cancer, among others, have killed more children for the CDC than COVID. We have never had kids wear masks to stop the spread of the flu, so why are we making them wear masks now? And at what point will this end? It is very likely that different variants of COVID will be around forever. It is unhealthy and impractical to force children to continue wearing masks forever. Fourth, and most importantly, I am concerned for my children's health. Last year, two of my daughters came home regularly with headaches, some days worse than others. One of my daughters experienced high levels of anxiety on a regular basis. She mainly expressed this at home and kept it inside all day at school as she was afraid to tell her teacher about her feelings. One of my daughters has a very sensitive stomach and feels not only claustrophobic, but nauseous at times from wearing the mask. I worry that they are not getting proper levels of oxygen to their brains, especially at such a young age when they are still developing. I worry about the long-term effects of my kids wearing a mask, such as dental and vision problems, as well as their social well-being. 
Masks are a false sense of security. Anybody who feels they are safe from catching the virus and wearing a mask is sorely mistaken. Science and many studies have proven this. Kids can still get the virus from someone sitting next to them, whether they have a mask on or not. In closing, I humbly ask you to put yourself in the shoes of a child. Let them be kids. Let them smile at each other and laugh openly with their friends. The majority of kids are wearing masks any so so why not let the children and parents who don't feel they need to wear the mask make the choice for themselves? One of the greatest blessings we have as Americans is our freedom. Hi, uh, my name is Vicki Pastor. I'm calling about agenda item number BRD1. Uh, I have a son at Palm Beach Central High School, and I wanted to speak um, and say that I do not agree with the mask mandate. I would like to have the option as a parent to um, say that my son uh, does not have to wear a mask at school. Uh, I do agree with the governor on that, and I do understand that the um, law that he put in place for the Parents' Bill of Rights is in effect, and uh, we do have a preemption clause that protects us as well that says that the state uh, law overrides or overrules the local law. Um, and I do understand that you're in litigation against the governor. So I'm assuming that at this time that the governor's uh, mandate um, saying that masks are not required in its parental decision is in fact um, in place. So with that being said, um, I do know that in, in the CDC and on the New England Journal of Medicine, there's an article from the American Institute for Economic Research that states that there are harmful effects that occur when children wear masks. Um, and I do believe that they have not proven um, that masks do prevent viruses from spreading. So there really is no data on that. Um, they do say that, that masks cause psychological damage, cognitive development issues, facial expression, um, not being able to be read by children helps them develop difficulty breathing, inhalation of toxic substances, uh, CO2 intoxication, sudden cardiac arrest seen in children, a reduction in blood oxygenation, um, there's psychological damage, dizziness and lightheadedness, headaches, bacterial and mold buildup, and anxiety and sleep problems in children. Um, I don't believe that a child should be masked all day at school when I don't believe there's any data because I'm not sure if the school board even has data that states that masks do um, provide protection against a virus. So, I, I mean, if that were the case, I, I don't think we'd be having a COVID outbreak because many, many, many people for over the last year and a half have been wearing masks. And, um, you know, I did go to the school, Palm Beach Central, to speak to the principal since my son did not wear a mask over the last few days at school. Um, and I noticed that the, board, the school staff, kids, even when we're not wearing their masks properly. So just so you're aware of that. Thank you. Hello, my name is Palmo Buzeli. I'm leaving this message regarding the agenda topic of um, wearing the mask, um, the school, inside the school. Um, I'm calling in behalf of my eight-year-old grandchild. She wore masks during the past school year. Till them her age to feel safe and healthy and joyful. The fight should have been over by now. Florida decided and ruled and sided with the parents' right to make the decision for masks against for their own children. She's scared now because she's afraid that she will be punished if not wearing a mask. The intimidation must stop right away. The attitude of the school board is abusive. I plead to uphold the law and the parents govern their own children. Thank you. My name is Julie Kilker, and I'm calling 
to talk about the challenge to the mask mandate that the school board has put in place for the Palm Beach County Schools. I have two children. They are in elementary school in Palm Beach County Schools. And I want to first off state by saying I am all for keeping not only my kids, but all the kids in our county safe and healthy. And I will do whatever it takes to put to protect my children and keep them safe and healthy, especially from COVID. What is happening with the mask mandate seems like a very false sense of safety and security to me. These kids are wearing masks that really aren't protecting them from COVID. Um, a lot of kids are wearing masks that, um, you know, they can, they can actually spread COVID through. So we're asking them to put a covering over their face where they cannot see emotion or hear the teachers very well. And for the most part, have trouble breathing through because they have a covering on their face for six to eight hours a day. And I would strongly urge the school board to take a look at what this mandate is doing and to see if there's any way that they can lift the mandate because the kids are not wearing the mask outside. They're not wearing the mask in the lunchroom. It just is very silly that when they sit at their desk, they have to keep their face covered and they can't sit there and breathe freely. And what is happening with my two children is that when they ask the teacher if they can have a breathing break or they can pull their mask down for a little bit, the teacher is being ugly and mean, they're not letting them have this breathing break. And it's breaking my heart when my kids are coming home saying, I don't want to go to school, I don't want to have to wear this mask, and I don't have an option. We are two working parents, and there's no virtual school option. And so when there's no option, and this is our only option, we've got to figure out how to come together and work something out together where our kids are able to breathe during school hours but also to keep them safe and healthy. And when COVID isn't really affecting our children that much, then we really should be taking a look at lifting this mask mandate. Thank you. My name is Amanda Wood and I'm calling regarding agenda number BRD1. I'm a parent of three young children in the Palm Beach County School District. They forced, the forced masking of my kindergartners has stolen the joy out of them. Our mornings are filled with tears and anxiety before school. My child with sensory issues cannot concentrate with his wet, sweaty mask on all day. Have you seen a young child wearing a mask? You cannot tell me this is saving lives. There is no data to prove these masks work on these young children. Can we talk about the long list of negative consequences of masking these young children? You are affecting my child's development. Give parents a choice and follow the governor's order. Yes, hi. My name is Sarah Key. I'm a longtime Palm Beach County resident. I attended our public school system, as did my three children. I teach second and third graders at my church, and after having observed for two semesters how a classroom full of children use their masks, I believe it is child abuse to make them continue wearing them. Children touch their masks repeatedly with dirty hands. They drop them on the ground, they step on them, they stuff them in their pockets, they cough in them, they sneeze in them, and then they put them back on their faces. Adults are literally forcing our children to wear a petri dish over their noses and mouths. It is disgusting and causes more harm to them than good. This alone is reason to unmask our children. And as you well know, flu and RSV are exponentially more dangerous to children than COVID-19, yet you have never masked children for the possibility of catching these diseases. In addition, the psychological effect of children covering their faces and not seeing their teachers' faces in order to understand societal cues or basic enunciation skills when spoken to has detrimental ramifications that we are sure to see in years to come. What are we doing to our children? Even one of President Biden's top COVID-19 advisors, Dr. Michael Osterholm, said that the cloth or paper masks that people use don't work to stop the spread of the COVID-19 virus. I ask you again, why on earth are we masking our kids? I ask you, what gives you the right to supersede the authority of a parent who wants their child to breathe freely? The decision to mask our kids must be taken out of the hands of the elite. Parents must make this decision. It is their right to decide. 
If you believe that masks work, then a child who wears one is protected from a child who doesn't. Thank you for listening. Regards. My name is Alexandra Olson, and I'm speaking about Agenda BRD1. You are manipulating people to view their freedom as selfish. You are manipulating people to think that masks are the solution and that our healthy children who won't wear them are the problem. You are manipulating people to think that we, the parents, who would give our life for our children, don't know what is best for our children. You are manipulating people to feed into your corrupt and selfish narrative. The problem for you is that you know this is a major overreach, and you know that any rational adult with a heart and half a brain will not accept this behavior. So like the manipulative, corrupt, and greedy predators you are, you are preying on the weak, on our innocent, vulnerable, impressionable children. You are using our children as pawns to spread your propaganda. You have gotten so desperate in your attempts for your selfish gain that you are now having to resort to threatening our schools. You are using good-hearted educators, teachers, and principals whose genuine passion is teaching, enriching, and empowering children. And now you are using them as pawns. You are infringing on the most basic of human rights. You have disobeyed the governor's executive orders. You have ignored our parents' bill of rights. You are not God. You are not our governor. And you are not above the law. You seem to think you can play God and supersede our governor's orders and disobey and ignore our human rights. But you are mistaken. Let me remind you of who you are. You are board members of the Palm Beach County Board of Education. Your job is to see to that our children receive a proper education. That's it. This is what you get paid for. Instead, you are discriminating against our children, segregating our children, putting fear into our children, threatening our children, bullying our children, and dismissing our children. You are now putting them into isolation rooms without their peers and without any education. You are not doing a single thing that your job actually entails. Once again, my name is Alexandra Olson. I'm the mother of a first grader who has been subjected to your fascism, and I'm here along with thousands of other parents to tell you that you will not continue to get away with this tyranny. Hi, my name is Leah Fiorentino, and I am calling about POL-GT1 policy 1.03 and about BD1, the medical exemption mask policy. Um, I just want to say that I am a mother of a child at Water's Edge Elementary School, and I'm deeply concerned that anti-maskers are using our school board meetings to spread dangerous propaganda and derail meetings. Uh, there is a simple solution to deplatform these people is to streamline public comment and create more productive meetings. Please change the procedures for public comment to allow for the safe and productive board meetings to continue. Please allot a specific amount of time for public comment, such as 30 minutes, and please allow a specific number of speaking spots for students, community members, and staff using a lottery system for those um, to be able to have a spot would be great. Uh, um, additional comments can be submitted via email, and these procedures will allow for safe and productive board meetings from a limited number of people. Um, I would also like to ask that you stick to your guns. Um, I appreciate your courage, uh, those of you that voted for the mask mandate, um, and appreciate the fact that my son can now go to school, and um, I expect that he's in a classroom with masked students and that's going to protect his whole family and himself. Please do not allow people to have a medical exemption note from just a doctor. There is a procedure in place. Um, students who have a real medical need have a process, and those parents who have real medical needs can go through that process, starting with a doctor's note and getting a 504 plan for their child. It will take them time, and they will have to work with the ESC coordinators and with the schools, but if there is a real medical need, there is already a way for them 
to send their child to school with no mask, but they do have to go through the process. Um, going through a process for a 504 plan or an IEP is a difficult thing, but if there's a real need, there's already something in place. So just getting Uncle Joe to give you a doctor's note that says Johnny doesn't need a mask is not acceptable. They need to go through the process and follow the rules. Thank you very much for your support. I support you guys, and thank you for everything you've done. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Hi, my name is Ashley Labad, and I am speaking on DDR1, challenging the executive order of our governor. Um, I'm calling because you guys are breaking the law. You are segregating students, and you are suspending them. You are taking away their education, and this is not right. It needs to stop immediately. Um, we were also told as parents for the opt-out parents, I should say, that messages were not allowed. Now that we know they are back, I'm leaving my message. Um, there is absolutely no standing on this, and the fact that you guys are pushing to break the law is not okay. Parents are going to be speaking up, and we are writing to the Department of Education. We are also writing to Governor DeSantis, and you guys need to stop this immediately. You also need to make sure that when you schedule these meetings, parents can show up to them. We know what your agenda is. We know what you're doing, Mr. Burke. If you keep having meetings that you are not wearing a mask in, you need to stop pushing the masks on our kids in school. New Hampshire just had a school board meeting where they proved with a CO2 sensor live that it is not good for the kids. Please stop abusing our kids and make sure that you follow the law. Otherwise, you should all resign immediately. Thank you so much and have a great day. Hi, this is Nicholas Rose from Jupiter. I'm calling to comment regarding the potential legal challenge to Ron DeSantis' executive order. The CDC's own data shows that kids are far more likely to die from cancer, drowning, homicide, suicide, cardiovascular disease, or the flu than they are of COVID-19. We haven't removed all water sources from the schools to prevent drowning. We didn't mask kids during previous flu seasons. Why are we doing it now? The long-term effects of masking children is still a huge unknown. It's not up to the board to raise our children. Leave that to the parents. DeSantis' executive order gives parents the right to make health decisions on behalf of their children. Your mandate takes away that right. What sane person believes that filing a legal challenge and reducing a citizen's right to choose would be the appropriate course of action? You were not elected to restrict our rights. This is the United States of America, a beacon of freedom for the world. Start behaving like it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Melanie Byrne. I am calling in reference to agenda items for August 25th, 2021, the special meeting regarding um, the challenge to executive order in emergency rules. Um, I have a kindergartner at Frontier Elementary. It is my understanding of um, the executive order placed by Governor DeSantis that it is the right by law of parents to choose whether or not they want to send their child to school in a mask. I support the right of every parent to make the best decision for their kids. Um, I think this, the school board is making unilateral decisions without thinking about the effects of kids' health and daily interactions. It's my right as a parent to send my child to school without a mask. It causes her anxiety, it gives her headaches, as a result, she's having GI issues, um, and the fact that, you know, you guys have made this, you've taken, you've taken that away and have instead decided that you are going to discipline my child when it is by right my decision. Um, so I stand by the governor's um, decision, and I implore you to, um, to reconsider um, the implications, because as of right now, you are breaking the law, um, and I don't support that. And so, um, as a concerned parent, I urge you to reconsider that decision and understand, again, that by law, it is my right to choose, and I will continue to do that. Thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Nicole Franchini Wolf, and I'm calling regarding BD1 um, in regards to the mask 
policies. Um, I feel that we have parental rights to decide what is best for our children, and it's not a one-size-fits-all measure. Um, everyone uses their common sense. They keep their home, their child home if they're sick. Um, using standard common sense techniques, you would think that, like we've handled the flu and everything in the past, that this is an appropriate measure that a parent could take. Please, please, please give the parents the option to choose whether or not their child needs to wear a mask or not. We are supported by legislation. There's a law in place. And I'm trying to teach my child that it's not okay to break the law. Please, school board, please consider that the mask option should be held intact. This is very, very important for our children to see that we're following policy and procedure in that way and that we, as parents, know what's best for our children. Thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Katie Chandler, and I'm calling about agenda topic BD1, the medical exemption for face mask policy. I have two children in the district, one's in middle school and one's in high school. I've worked as a mental health practitioner for the past 20 years in Palm Beach County, spending the majority of my profession in the homes and schools of the children that I work with. I'm kindly asking, encouraging, imploring, begging, and demanding that you follow the law and give parents the right to choose whether or not to mask their children. Universal, mask, universal masking is dehumanizing, and mark my word, we are going to see an epic increase in mental health issues related to these masks and the enforcement of rules, punishment, shaming, and segregation that is happening in our classrooms. There are children who are experiencing both medical and mental health issues because of these masks, and my daughter is one of those. Much like me, she has severe allergies, which includes headaches, stuffy nose, and runny nose. She experiences headaches dizziness and shortness of breath when wearing the mask. In fact, I had to pick her up from school multiple times last year due to these issues. My child's physical and mental health is just as important, yet I'm not getting that option to keep her safe. Yes, I can go to her doctor and maybe get a diagnosis for her that the 504 committee may or may not approve. Um, this one-size-fits-all mentality is not working, and it's creating even more issues for our children, our, our teachers, and our administrators. We need our teachers to be able to focus on what they do best, education. Not reprimanding, reminding, tracking, and sometimes shaming, punishing, and segregating them over these masks. You guys boast that you are taking a stand for our children's health, but it's only pertaining to this virus. And I am not going to even get into the research related to the effectiveness of these cloth masks that Grandma or Old Navy made. And while they're super cute, they are not super effective. Um, I will remind you, however, that these policies for masks that you are imposing are for a virus that, per the CDC, has over a 99% survivability rate with no medical intervention. You guys aren't considering the multitude of other medical and mental health complications of mask wearing. Let me be clear, I am not an anti-masker. I am a pro-choice masker. If a parent wants their child to wear a mask, that is their choice. I'm just demanding that you comply with the laws and give parents the option to choose what is best for our children. Hi, my name is Alyssa Sanders. I would like to compliment the board on making safety their top priority during the high levels of COVID-19 infection that we've had in the last few weeks. Um, regarding the issue of whether uh, we accept doctor's notes, um, the CDC recommends that all students, staff, and faculty who are not fully vaccinated against the coronavirus wear a mask indoors. Children under 12 are still not approved for the vaccine in the United States. Therefore, I think we should follow the CDC guidelines and we should just accept 504 or ADA as our exception. Thank you for listening. Good morning, this is Gabriel Chakran. I'm calling in regard to the agenda of school board meeting for Wednesday, August 25th, in regard of uh, uh, to allow masks to opt out. 
um, in my opinion and in my family opinion, our household would like to remain that would be the parents' decision. We've seen too many um, board members or even commissioners going all kinds of meetings without masks. And uh, even lately, as they uh, came a conference of Palm Beach, uh, very crowded uh, without masks. There's no need to uh, put 20, 30 kids uh, in a room uh, to do this. To do, they should be able to do the same. Uh, parents, uh, parents, and 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 I'm sure most, if not all, teachers are vaccinated. And if they get it, they, you get it less. You don't get it as strong. You don't get sick as strong. So it's the, the whole point of continuing life. And kids it should be able to concentrate, should be able to breathe normal and act normal and go to normal. I believe the other measurements have been uh, very well done. The, the, the track racing and tracing tracking uh, anybody that had it and quarantine them or, you know, get them checked before they go back to school and all that. That's been great. We, every other day, uh, a, a, uh, a call from the, and an email from the school uh, letting us know that. That's great. But kids should have, parents should have the right to decide what their kids would uh, um, to go to school with or without masks. You don't have to be 504 or 88 for a doctor's note, which we know eventually uh, anybody will be able to get it. Thank you for your consideration and for sharing our message. Hi, my name is Josie Makovic. I'm calling in regards to um, RB1, the question on whether or not the county, I'm sorry, the school district should join in a lawsuit against the governor for executive orders um, prohibiting you from um, mandating medical devices on our children. I'm very much not in favor of the school board deciding to use our tax dollars to sue the governor. Um, I find it frivolous, a waste of time. There are bigger things that are, we are dealing with here in this county in our school district um, you know, such as teaching children how to read. I know several kindergartners that have gone into first grade this year who don't know how to read due to the shenanigans you've been pulling for the last year and a half and are continuing to pull. So I suggest instead of picking fights with the governor that you focus inward on our actual district and children learning how to read and being able to function in the schools at a, at a normal level. I also take massive issue with our superintendent Essentially, I don't care if it was a quote from a song, it was inappropriate. And you, on your rules here, told me that I need to behave with civility and not use ver verbiage that incites violence. Well, suggesting that the Chamber of Commerce send guns to help the school district defend against parents who are angry that you are mandating medical devices on our children is reprehensible, and he needs to be removed immediately as well as you went from last year at the end of last school year at the end of may saying no children will be reprimanded or disciplined for removing their masks to now wanting to put them in in-school suspension taking five and six year olds out of their classrooms and putting them in isolation rooms what kind of psychological torture are you trying to perpetuate on children what kind of crazy people are actually sitting on a board and saying, yes, this is a good idea. This is healthy for children. I mean, quite honestly, you guys need to take an examination of yourselves and really see if this is really in the best interest of children. Just that you keep saying it's all about the health of children. Well, it's not. Separating a child and disciplining them for removing their masks so that they can breathe or choosing not to wear one because their parents feel that it is not healthy for them who are, who are in charge of their own health is it's just, it, 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 it defies all logic. And last year, there were children who were throwing up in their masks, who were sneezing and coughing in their masks. The children take their masks into the bathroom. They fall on the bathroom floor. They pick up feces and put them back on their faces. Like, it's disgusting. And yet here you are separating them and disciplining them with in-school school suspension and suspension for removing them. I mean, what is happening? What, so I suggest that you take a self 
self-examination of what you are doing and focus your, 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 your efforts on teaching our children how to Agenda topic 11, my name is Jennifer Weiler. I am calling um, about the recent change in the mask mandate and how horrific it has been for my two elementary age children. On Monday, my children continued to go to school without a mask. They are in second and fourth grade. And um, we are following the law of the state of Florida, which has not changed regardless of what the board seems to want to do. Um, we will not break the law. We are fine breaking a policy. That being said, on Monday, my son, after um, his morning announcements, he's in fourth grade, after the morning announcements, the teacher on the morning announcement said, now masks are mandatory. Please, students, look around you and see who's not wearing a mask. Immediately, six students stood up around him and congregated around him, which is also policy, uh, as part of the student policy, stood one foot away from his face, shouting, why aren't you wearing a mask? Where's your mask? You need to be, she said you need a mask. And the teacher did not say anything to stop them. My son said, my mom said, I don't have to. He didn't know what else to say. He didn't get angry. He didn't get upset. Eventually, he just put his head down until they stopped and sat themselves back down. A few minutes later, fortunately, it was time to leave for specials. They got up, lined up. The teacher turned the lights out, and my poor nine-year-old son started to cry because he was so upset about the harassment that had been incited by the school teacher who said that comment over the announcement. Something similar happened to my daughter, except not as um, extreme. It's, it's been a nightmare this week. Yesterday I got a call that today my children, who are six and nine, would be put in an isolation room, which means they're being segregated from their peers. Both of them have educational plans. So this is illegal for them to be taken out of the classroom where their services are being performed. So I would love to know how this is going to be addressed, how they are going to get their services, because I was assured this was not a suspension room. This was simply a separate room for these students. So if this is not a suspension room, it's a segregation room, and my children are not re receiving the services that are legally binded. So this is a nightmare. We're in the process of filing a lawsuit against the school district, and this is absolutely unacceptable. And I highly recommend that you all change what you are doing to these poor children, pitting them against each other. Good morning. My name is Erica Mejia, and I am a mother of a child that is that goes to um, to this Palm Beach County um, School District. I am calling in regards to BB1 board discussion braille medical exemption to face mask policy. I received a call today from school, from my son's school, stating that his facial covering was not sufficient and he needs to wear a triple layer mask. I was advised my child needs to have a 404 accommodation form so he is able to wear his facial covering that he's been wearing for the past three weeks. My husband and I are definitely looking to pull our child out of the school. This is beyond ridiculous. We have tried to comply with the facial covering. Now they're making us jump through hoops to let him wear what he has been wearing, which the school, the principal, and the teachers have been okay with it. Now they have to call us and let us know that this is not sufficient. He should be focusing and learning and enjoying his school and his peers. Instead, he's stressed out. He's telling me every morning he does not want to go to school because he has a tummy ache, which I know he doesn't. And he's worried about the type of facial covering he's wearing. This is no longer for their health. And you know it. We know it. 
thank you for listening. That's all I have to say. This needs to. Um, this is tyrannical at this point, and we need to focus on teaching our children and letting letting them enjoy their school and their and their friends. Hi, my name is Lori Scalise, and I am calling to leave a comment for agenda item BD1. I'm sorry that I cannot be there in person today to speak, but my youngest daughter has been home all week due to the school board suddenly retracting the opt-out for parents. Getting a medical exemption is not even possible at this point, as so many doctors and pediatric practices have flat out stated they will not write an exemption for any child for fear of retribution from those who want to keep the mandate in place. Have any of you ever considered or brought up to the other board members any concerns about children who have valid medical reasons for mask exemptions? Many children are being harmed from extensive mask wearing. The board has been presented with this information time and again by concerned parents. The human lungs are not designed to rebreathe their own carbon dioxide, and breathing through a mask for extensive periods can lead to bacterial lung infections and pneumonia and cause serious skin conditions and acne. I'm also sure that you understand that there are many children that simply cannot wear a mask. Those with severe allergies or asthma, children with ADHD, sensory issues, speech delays, learning disabilities, Masks do not only have physical effects, but also mental and emotional. Many children have become withdrawn and socially isolated over this. Have you ever considered any of these effects on children and presented them to the board for discussion? My four-year-old daughter, who's out of school this week, is autistic and mostly nonverbal. She started preschool for the first time this year, and she absolutely loves it and has already shown improvement. Now, she's being required to wear a mask, a four-year-old speech-delayed autistic child in a mask. She's trying to learn to speak. Please explain to me how she will learn to speak when her mouth is covered, her teachers, and all of her classmates' mouths are covered. This is a crucial time in her development. My husband and I did not jump through hoops to get her where she is to allow this rogue school board to take it away from her. She cannot speak. I should not have to get an exemption from a doctor for her to not have to cover up her mouth. Masks are not a one-size-fits-all solution. They impact, they will have, and all children need to be taken into consideration. We keep hearing that the mask mandate is for public health. Harming one child to save another is not public health. Parents do not need to get an exemption for their child. This board needs to follow the rule of law and put the optional clause back in her, the governor's executive order, and the parents' bill of rights. Thank you. Yes, my name is Tony Brazali. I'm a parent of two children in the school district. Um, I am addressing agenda item number uh, BRD1, the mask mandate. Um, the Parents' Bill of Rights was passed by the State House and the State Senate, signed into law by the Governor of the State of Florida. It is therefore a lawful order. The Executive Order 21175 was signed by Governor DeSantis and is therefore a lawful order. Um, by Mr. Burke's own words, the other day, he said, we are making up our own rules. And by ignoring the lawful orders, you, with the mask mandate and uh, ignoring the parents' opt-out letters, you have implemented an unlawful order. Yet, according to your email, it is the will of the board. So you've put an unlawful order in place over two lawful orders, yet you expect us to comply with your unlawful order. Well, oh, and by the way, the superintendent and a number of y'all weren't wearing masks yesterday at the uh, Chamber of Commerce meeting. So that makes all of you absolute hypocrites, and you're also not following the science. I'd like to point you to a recent article, scientific article by Damian Guerrera at the University of Louis, Louisville. Um, they hypothesized that the use of masks and mask mandates were associated with lower COVID-19 case growth rates. And through their research, they concluded that in fact, they did not observe association between mask mandates or use of masks and reduced COVID-19 spread. So the scientific conclusions were opposite of their proposed hypothesis. Uh, by your own 
legal counsel, general counsel's words when asked what legally can you do to force masks on, on students, the words were nothing legally you can do to force a student to wear a mask. Even discipline could present a problem with legal challenges. You guys have no right to rule lawful orders and no moral authority to expect us to comply with an unlawful order. This mask mandate must. And additionally, you should all step down from your offices. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Diana Manali. I have two children in the North Area Public Schools, and I'm calling to address several agenda items. First, number nine in the consent agenda, policy 1.03, eliminating recorded messages. Parents are working at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. You schedule these meetings during working hours. If you're going to be continuing to schedule meetings during working hours, then public comment should be able to be received via recorded messages. Otherwise, special session meetings and all school district meetings should be held between 5 or 6 p.m. Further, if we are masking our children and defying orders, then that is further proof that recorded messages must be needed. Because if our kids have to be in school and mask all day because of the virus, then people should be able to not have to come to a public meeting because of the virus. Agenda item number 11, new business, the legal challenge. You are wasting money that can go towards educating students and paying staff on legal fees for disobeying, disobeying and breaking state law. Implementing parent choice and opt-outs is the only way to proceed. A small percentage of parents and families opted out of masking. To be wasting money like this on a lawsuit for a political agenda is reckless and unethical. Your job is to educate children, not push a political agenda. And this has 100% become a political agenda. And it is not due to our governor, it is due to the school boards defying and disobeying state law. Number 12, item number 12 on the medical exemption. By removing medical exemptions, you have further broken the ADA laws. All children are entitled to a public education and parents are allowed to make medical decisions for their families. If families are able to get a medical exemption, there is no reason why they should have to go to, through a very long 504 process to obtain that medical exemption. Further, the comments made by interim Superintendent Burke at the Chamber of Commer Commerce breakfast were disgusting and fireable statements, and they further go to the persona of the, of the board and of the district. You're representing our children. You're representing the school board, and that was disgusting. Number 12 and number 11 and number 9 are all illegal policies. The deprivation of rights under the color of law, Section 242 of Title 18. These are constitutional rights, civil rights. And this, thank you so much. Hello, my name is Michelle Feldman. I'm calling about agenda item number 12, the medical exemptions for face mask policy. I think it's absolutely ridiculous that you guys made it impossible unless your child has a mental disability to opt out of face masks. You do not know people's medical history. There's people that have sinus issues, anxiety, depression. You don't know people's background and it's not fair to those children that can't opt out of face masks. And like I told Superintendent Burke yesterday on the phone when I spoke to him personally, he, I told him the hypocrisy that you guys show is ridiculous. You make our children in elementary school sit in a mask all day long. We, can't, we couldn't even walk our kids to school on the first day because it wasn't allowed. We can't go to curriculum night in person because it's not allowed because of COVID for the safety of all the children and staff and everyone else. But you guys, all the board members and hundreds of other people in Palm Beach County had a breakfast, back to school breakfast event yesterday. 
Nobody was wearing a mask. Nobody was social distanced. It's ridiculous. And if you want to impose these tyrannical rules, do it and do it across the board. You can't, the hypocrisy is a joke at this point. Please just get it together. This board is honestly an embarrassment along with the superintendent and his inappropriate comments that he made yesterday. You guys should be ashamed of yourselves and you need to fix everything because people are going to lose their minds. Hello, my name is Natalie Toto. I'm calling regarding the mask mandate in school. I'm calling to ask that you allow parents to continue to opt out their children along with the doctor's note. My children have asthma and cannot wear a mask for extended periods of time without becoming short in breath, getting headaches, and an overwhelming feeling of discomfort. Please allow them to opt out of wearing masks. If you do not allow children to opt out of wearing masks, it will result in more school absences due to things like panic attacks, headaches, vision issues. Please, I strongly ask you to allow parents to opt their children out. Thank you very much for hearing me. Hello, my name is Angel Gerard, and I want to start off by thanking you for voting for a mask mandate. As a Palm Beach County teacher, I'm extremely concerned about the health and safety of our students as well as my fellow teachers and staff. It is really important as school board members to say what you mean and mean what you say. This is not truly a mask mandate if it isn't enforced. You need to back us while we are out here in the trenches. I think it's a grave mistake if you just allow a simple doctor's note for students to claim medical exemptions. People who live in the areas where there are large populations of students who try to opt out of wearing masks can simply call in favors to get these doctor notes for medical exemptions. This is happening a lot in areas such as Wellington and in the north area of the county such as Jupiter. We need to ensure that students go through legit processes of, such as 504 and IEP in order that students who really need um, a medical exemption or who have a disability um, can get what they need and not just students who don't want to wear a mask. Also, when it comes to um, the policy for noncompliance, I think we need to make sure that we shorten that process and um, we need to speak to the student, speak to the parent, and we need to get rid of reiterating expectations, losing privileges, losing extracurriculars, temporary removal. All those extra steps are uncalled for. Speak to the student, speak to the parent, and then we need to go um, straight to ISS and OSS. Thank you so much for listening to me, and I definitely appreciate the job that you guys are doing. Have a great day. BRD item one. My name is Angela Templeton and I'm not a COVID denier. My husband and many family and friends have had it. I'm grateful for the service all public officials offer to the community and I believe you all joined the school board to be a force for good in the lives of children. But the power to do good is also the power to do harm. You are harming the children you serve in two ways. First, by overstepping your authority and second, by ignoring truth. The first harmful act is a local school board overstepping its authority into the home and it is not only harmful, but appalling. You have departed from medical safety measures and made the masking of children a mandate for the moral good of society. I've taught my children that our family has rules and morals that may be different than other families, and that's okay, because mom and dad have a God-given authority over our family, not over anyone else's. You have no authority over my family, our values, our medical decisions. You are communicating to my child that your authority is higher than mine. How would you like me to teach your kids the same thing? That my moral authority trumps yours. The second harmful act is relinquishing all grasp on logical reasoning skills. Stories have been leaked of teachers shaming students who aren't vaccinated and only exposed students with religious mask exemptions are being sent home to quarantine, but not vaccinated students. Has anyone looked at the data of how many breakthrough cases occur in the vaccinated 
versus those with natural immunity? American studies confirm the Israeli studies that prove natural immunity is six times better at preventing infection. If the only way to stay safe was to mask and vaccinate, then why are the hospitals half filled with vaccinated individuals, but have very few, if any, repeat COVID cases? In May, the CDC published the results of a study which looked into how effective certain measures were at preventing the COVID spread. There was no difference between schools which required masks for students and those which didn't. Your policies are ignoring this data and maliciously and ignorantly creating two medical classes, the safely vaccinated and the dangerously unvaccinated. Governor DeSantis issued his executive order to protect parental rights, and you should not overstep nor ignore the outcry of the parents you serve. Yes, there's a spike in cases. Yes, individuals should avoid people who are positively infected, but we shouldn't let reason fly out the window, nor should we punish children based on medical status. If you're afraid of spreading, let's be honest, everyone except those with natural immunity are potential spreaders. Perhaps we need to revisit at-home learning for those who fear for the lives of their kids. Your current policies are not only not going to eliminate are not only not going to eliminate COVID spread, but are in fact a tyrannical solution. Thank you for listening. Hello, my name is Marcy Reed. I'm calling in for the special meeting, um, category 11, new business, subject BRD1, consider challenge to executive order and emergency rules. As I said, my name is Marcy Reed. I am a mother of two school-age children in Palm Beach County. Several months ago, we were forced to uproot our family from our home in Connecticut after the state passed unconstitutional legislation to repeal its longstanding religious exemption for vaccination in schools. This legislation meant that our children could not attend the public schools for which we pay with our taxes. Rather than violate our sincerely held religious beliefs, we left our home and moved to the great state of Florida seeking religious freedom so that our children could exercise their constitutional right to a free and public education. Imagine our devastation when we learned that this school board had the audacity to defy the law in the state of Florida and impose mask mandates on our children. We uprooted our lives so that our children would have the right to attend school and your reckless actions have stripped our children yet again of this inalienable right. My children cannot wear masks. My children will not wear masks. You have absolutely no right or authority to impose such a mandate on my children or anyone else's under the law of this state or under God. If any parent chooses to send their children to school with a mask on, nothing is stopping them from doing so. I do not co-parent with this school board and we will not comply with these unlawful, disgraceful actions. Thank you. Good afternoon, board members. My name is Emmy Kenny, and I live in District 7 in West Palm Beach, and I have a comment for Agenda Item 9. I was an educator in the district for a few years, and now I sit on the District Diversity and Equity Committee, so I have been at many school board meetings over the years for various reasons. Um, but as you know, over the past year or so, these meetings have become a little dramatic from where you're sitting. But I want to tell you what it's like from where I'm sitting in the audience, um, because it's there, it's even worse. So the crowd quickly splits into two sides, and after every speaker, one side claps, the other side boos, and it's less like a public school board meeting and more like an angry pep rally. And it creates an atmosphere of us versus them, which is never a good tactic for finding solutions to problems, but it also creates a very intimidating, scary environment for the people that are there to make their comments, the teachers, the students. I can't even imagine a student at this point going into um, this meeting to make a comment. And recently, a known white supremacist group came to the board and intimidated the crowd intentionally. And I know you're aware of this, and I appreciate that the video backdrop uh, changed, but I have not been physically present at these meetings since then because I'm literally afraid um, to go there. So I agree with the points in your proposed policy here to have each speaker state their name and their location of residence, 
make sure they have a stake in what happens in this district, but that's not enough. Decorum needs to be addressed. And, uh, you know, at city and commission meetings, they don't allow any noise coming from the crowd. No clapping, no cheering, definitely no heckling or booing. Um, and it's because we're not at a pep rally. We're at a public meeting and where we need to get things done. So I would do away with any noise from the audience at all, even applause, while it's, you know, negative and po positive noise needs to be eliminated because it, it really separates the crowd. And, of course, limiting public comment to a certain number of speakers and taking the rest via email is effective. Um, and I'll leave the rest of it to you, but I, I just want to say I, I really appreciate you all rewriting this policy to address this issue. It's very serious. Um, because there's so much work to do within our district, and I hate to see the legitimate voices and concerns be drowned out by a group of people that just want to use these meetings as a personal soapbox to further a political agenda. So be strong, we have your back, and I look forward to being able to attend these meetings. Thank you. Hello, this is regarding policy 1403 school board meeting, consider challenge to executive order and emergency rules. My name is Jane Miller. I like to follow real science and common sense. Here are some facts. World Health Organization states there is no evidence wearing a mask by a healthy person in a community setting will prevent infection with respiratory viruses such as COVID, which is nothing more than a common cold. Wearing masks cause more harm than benefits. The St. German study published last month were following 25,930 children. 60% reported irritability, 50% difficulty concentrating, 44% were reluctant to go to school, 38% had impaired learning, 53 reported headaches, and so on, so on. And this was only after 270 minutes a day of wearing a mask, about four and a half hours. There were also signs of um, hypercapnia, which is a buildup of carbon dioxide in their bloodstream. The levels that were measured exceeded 25,000 parts per million. The younger the child, the higher level of carbon dioxide in their bloodstream. Children need twice as much oxygen than adults. There's pathogens that are being captured in the mask, and these are now entering the lungs. A piece of cloth that is worn on a child's face for an entire day ends up being a petri dish of pathogens. So masks provide a warm, moist environment for bacteria to grow, and these can cause respiratory infections, gastrointestinal and periodontal disease, basically anything from pneumonia to acne to gum disease. University of Florida Mass Spectrometry Research and Education Center did a face mask analysis that were worn by children ages 6 to 11 for average 5 to 8 hours. They found 96 strains. There were biological contaminants. 21 of them pathogenic, 11 particularly dangerous, linked to meningitis, sepsis, Lyme disease, Legionnaire's disease, tuberculosis, and severe infections. The evidence continues to mount that face masks are ineffective. They do more harm than benefit. Best protection is having a robust immune system. Children have that natural built-in immunity that is now being suppressed by at least 25% when they're being forced to wear a mask. The survival rate from COVID, according to the CDC own website for children, is 99%. By the way, 96% for adults over the age of 70. Yes, children will get sick, and yes, they will recover 100%. This virus is not as deadly as we've been told. We've got to think critically, so please follow the real science, not politics. Thank you. Hello, I'm calling on BD1. My name is Susie Barnes. I am a mother of three children in Palm Beach County. I wanted to start off firstly by saying shame on you. What you guys pulled in that meeting last week was not only unlawful, but it was abuse of power, authority, and corruption at its finest. The mess and distress that you have caused upon not only we the parents, the teachers, principals, and most importantly, our children is despicable. I'm not sure if this was your plan the entire time, because if I recall about a month ago at a meeting, Frank said, I don't even know why you guys are talking about mask mandates. That was never in the discussion. 
We aren't going, go, we are going to give the children the option upon returning to school whether they decide to wear a mask or not. So then what? You guys get your funding and then you reverse policy? It's, it's ridiculous. To say this isn't about politics, power, and money is a blatant lie. It's not about the children and their best interests. It's not even about the virus because the true virus is each and every single one of you. Children need consistency, and you guys are the most inconsistent, back-and-forth, flip-flopping board in our state. From mask to no mask to mask optional to mask optional, it, only if you have an opt-out to mandatory masking with no chance of opt-out or exemption. I mean, do you see what you are doing here? I had to tell my seven-year-old son that you guys were going to require masks again, and he broke down in tears. You are making children cry. Well, I don't comply, and I don't co-parent with you. I am a law-abiding citizen, and I have the law on my side, unlike you who make your own rules and pick and choose what rules you like to follow at that time. Where is the logic that my young child is getting disciplined by you guys who are the ones breaking the law? Oh, I forgot. Do as I say, not as I do. Two days ago, I was informed by my child's principal that if he doesn't comply, he will be removed from his classroom and into an isolation room. Upon questioning her, the principal told me she had no answers. You know what she told me? She told me she didn't know where they were going, she didn't have a plan of action, and she didn't even have enough staff to cover them unmasked children. Do you know how that makes a mother feel? By sending her child to school, not knowing where they're going, who's going to be watching them, or what they're going to be doing? My child is seven years old. This is unacceptable. It is unprofessional and, once again, unlawful. You guys did a real sneaky thing, and you're trying to make your principals and teachers do your dirty work. They don't have a clue as to what's going on. I was told by her the policies and per by day and by hour, you guys are shameful. We are coming from you. You have woken up more parents. We're rallying. We're not going to stop. Hi, my name is Missy Rosef. I am calling on BRD1. I have had kids go through the school system and currently have a high schooler, two high schoolers. My problem with all of this is that we're given an option. We have a right to choose what's right for our kids. You can't pigeonhole everybody in one classification. I do not wish illness, and I do not wish death, and I will always say that. However, you do not know what my children go through with psychological factors. They have their own mind, and they're able to make conscious decisions on when they feel comfortable to take a mask on, put a mask on and take one off. I have taught them to be respectful, to their teachers and their classmates if anyone is immune compromised or has other type of situations where a mask may be a, a right idea for that setting. However, when you're dealing with kids that deal with anxiety and they do need to be around people and they are better off being in an open environment than being holed up at home doing Florida virtual, they should be given the choice when they would like to take a mask off and breathe. I can go through all the statistics and information on how and my feelings about COVID and so forth. However, I really need for you to start thinking about everybody and not just feel like you are going against something because you don't like what a governor says or a local politician and you're doing what you think is the right thing. I would like facts. I would like to know why you're making this choice because honestly, I do not believe what the numbers are being said across the board. You need to really address and give us articles and research so we are able to make the conscious choice for what is right for our children. The psychological damage that's going on for adults as well as kids through this COVID quote unquote pandemic is ridiculous. You've instilled fear in our children You've instilled parents not wanting to discuss and be open-ended with conversation. It's either one size fits all, and I'm not okay with this anymore. You need to see what my mask looks like because it's not clean. And I will tell you right now, a majority of these kids are not wearing clean masks. I don't feel that it is scientifically proven that it's going to protect anyone, and I really, truly believe that you need 
to address us as this is not how it's done and this is what we're going to do. We need, I appreciate the time, but again, you are not considering the psychological factors that this is causing amongst students. My name is Angelica Melendez. Um, I'm a, a resident of Palm Beach County. Um, I'm, I would like to address the board uh, on two points of your meeting, the challenging of the executive order and the medical exception for face coverings. Um, my first point is that um, as a school board member, you should be in a work of service for the community. When you work for the community, you, there should be enough representation on all of the opinions and cases that are arising on the community. And I think that at this point, it's been an emotional and, and, and personal opinion influence on your decisions. So now that we are in a very changing climate and there's not a, a, a clear sight of what the right thing is, um, making the decisions that I'm making right now that they're going to be in detrimental of some of the kids of the county that you also represent and some of those families as well. So although my child has a medical condition that I could, you know, uh, uh, deliver to the school, there's many kids that the damage that is being done on their education by not being able to hear their, their instructions properly to uh, get a glimpse of the phonetics like my child is, is going through, it's gonna have a long-term effect that is gonna be difficult for um, a physician right now to address. So um, one more time, I think that um, the board is making very personal and a very emotional at the time to make this decision. My other point is that at this moment, the board is defying the law, so you as school board members and leaders should set an example for the staff and the children. So if you can break the law, then why should the staff and children follow your rules if you are an example of breaking the rules? So um, again, um, it's the address of this now, while you already mandated the official governance, is already breaking the law. So you're not setting a good example for our community in general. So. If, and my, my last point is, if the school is approaching inclusion as high importance in, in education, then why isn't it practice, practice now? The situation that arises in one family is different than the other families. So there should be enough representation of all of, of the opinions of the county. And therefore, that's why we should have the option or the choice on what's best for our family. Until this matter keeps changing, it'll, it will continue to arise problems in our kids. So please, I ask you to. My name is Anya Julian, and I'm speaking on agenda item 11 BRD1, consider challenge to the executive order and emergency rules. Hello, my name is Anya Julian. I'm a senior attending Park Vista High School. I'm an A student as well as an athlete. I know all you hear is adults speaking, so I'm here to share my point of view as a student. I was beside myself with joy when I found out that I didn't need to wear a mask this year. However, your, your new mandate turned the tables. During my high school career, I have never been disciplined until yesterday when I received a referral for a dress code violation of not wearing a mask. I was instructed to mask up, however, I stated that I respectfully did not consent, thus leading to one bad mark on my record. After I was taken outside to talk with my AP, instead of a nice balanced conversation between people, I got a lecture about my poor choice of not wearing a mask and was re-educated as to why I should wear one. I was told that the person I was talking to and most of my APs were science teachers once upon a time and that they follow all of the science news articles they find online. Enough of the formalities now. I'll be real. I felt bullied and concerned by the people who were supposed to protect me. I was told all about how their choices were good and mine were bad. I was also informed that tomorrow, which is today, if I continued making my bad choices, according to them, I would not only be banned from playing lacrosse as the goalie for the varsity team, but also segregated and isolated from the rest of the student body. 
I felt uncomfortable while my assistant principal attempted to force her narrative on my personal beliefs and health. As an AP, whom I've never talked to before, she should have not been trying to play the role of my parents. Even more so, she asked if my choices were influenced by my family. Afterwards, I felt like my family was being judged. Forcing her opinions onto me was bad enough, but involving my family? Well, that's crossing the line. Going back to school, some of my teachers decided to call me out in front of the class for not wearing a mask. Each time this happened, I fell under pressure from the teacher and all eyes on me. As my last year in high school, it's sad to think this is how my senior year could end up. And yet, something has awakened in me, and I want to thank the school board and all of the administration that have forced the mask mandate because you have lit a fire within me to stand up for my rights. As a child who came here from Russia, I plan to continue to fight for my life, liberty, Hi, my name is Regina Sinaccio, and I live in District 1. I'm calling to discuss Policy 1.03 and to ask that voice-recorded messages remain in place for workshops and board meetings at this time. Full-time working parents should have a pathway to let their public opinion be heard, and a voice-recorded message is a way to ensure that happens. Full-time working parents are not always able to make it to workshops at 2 p.m., and having the option to leave a message allows for effective communication. Board members still do not return emails, so how can we believe that email communication is a trusted means of sharing public opinion regarding certain topics? In regards to voice recorded messages for board meetings, if we were truly in a pandemic and there was a serious risk of infection and death, wouldn't you keep the voice recorded message option in place so that those who feel their health is at risk have a safe option available? I would like to add that you may challenge the executive order and emergency rules but it will continue to show that you are a rogue board who stands against the science. The vast majority of children are not critically ill from this virus. Your one-size-fits-all universal mask mandate will continue to harm hundreds of children as it did last year. And let's not forget that in the spring of 2020, 2021, you said that you could not go back on your word to parents returning to brick and mortar from virtual learning. And yet this is exactly what you did to us. You went back on your word. Masks were optional for the fall of 2021. And because of this decision, we will continue to move forward with legal action and fight for our children and their education and our rights as parents. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon. My name is Erin Cowan. I am the mother of three girls. Two are in the school system. The following is for topic BRD1. Words of a third grader. Mommy, I don't understand why I have to be separated from my friends and teacher. All I got was work work, excuse me, book work today and sat in the media room all day. I miss everything in class. Not fair. I hate wearing a mask. Sometimes it gives me headaches and it's hard for me to breathe. I can't see anyone's smile. I just see their eyes. Everyone hates the mask, but their parents make them wear it, and it's totally gross. They are wearing dirty masks all day. I watch the kid sneeze in his mask and not change it or wash his hands. So he touches his mask and touches everything else. Why can't we just make up our own mind? I want to be in school. I know you'll support me if I want to stay home, but I want to be in school. I want to be with my friends. I just don't know what to do. End quote. Monday, my girls were given a choice to comply to wear a mask or sit separated from the other children in a, quote, holding room. <clears throat> they were esca excuse me, escorted to and from the restroom to ensure that they did not wander in the building. Our children are being punished. This is mental abuse. On top of all of the normal social pressure, my middle school child is pressured to comply by her peers, not because they believe it's the right thing. They comply so they are not segregated. They are not separated. They are approached, excuse me, she was approached by multiple students who, at the state, who all had the same message, just put it on so that you can come into class. You can always pull it down. Nobody cares. Those calling the shots are the definition of hypocrites. Superintendent Michael Burke is on the record saying, we're making up our own rules, while instructing a portion of the text be removed, indicating the district would comply with state and local guidelines. Statistically, there is little to no evidence masks make a healthy difference. 
Our own Dr. Fauci is on record stating masks may make one feel better given the situation, but will not ultimately help protect against the virus. Masks come with a disclaimer on the box that they will not protect against the virus. Let parents decide. They did not sign up to co-parent with the government. It is the board's job to focus on education, reading, writing, arithmetic, and it's the parent's job to ensure safety. It is the parent's job for freedom of medical choice. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sandy Walters, and I am calling in regards to the agenda item that was added for the special board meeting today on August 25th at 2 p.m. My concern around allowing mass opt-out with a doctor's note only put thousands of children at risk, especially children who are not able to be vaccinated. The reason for my concern here and leaving a message is for the school board to mandate masks for all children and staff with only opting out based on 504 or ADA exemptions only. Again, my concern is thousands of children that are not able to be vaccinated and the Delta variant and the risk of more children becoming infected with this virus. Um, Thank you very much for listening to my message. I am a concerned parent of Palm Beach County. I would like for my voice to be heard and considered. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nicole, and I've called and left a message before. I forgot to mention that I'm speaking to Agenda BRD1 and BD1. So um, I'll say it again, and I am really disturbed by what's going on in the school district. And, uh, you know, we started the year very clear um, with an executive order, and uh, you guys, uh, you know, promised to respect it. And then uh, you watched uh, another board um decide to break the law and, and you felt it was appropriate to join in with that I mean breaking the law is still breaking the law it doesn't matter um so I, I don't understand what's happening here but it's causing chaos in the school district I understand now that uh people who are exercising their right and we still have the right by the executive order are uh, finding their children uh, denied access to classes, segregated um, by your orders. You ordered to segregate the kids. I, I can't get my head around that. Um, I, 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 that cannot be legal. And, you know, on the topic of masks in general, again, um, no adults, uh, practically no adults, wear masks for six hours straight with uh, breaks only for food or more than that if a child's an after or before care. Okay, nobody did that even before the vaccines. You know, people generally take breaks for working, uh, go to the store, put it on, leave, and the kids don't have that choice. And, and, and it's just criminal. And you don't have any regard for the age. I mean, you have the little VPK kids and the kindergartners, and then really most of the elementary school kids are not going to be wearing this thing right. I'm sure it's been said a million times. Um, I think it's even worse when you're dealing with these children because their hands are everywhere. They're still in their mouths. Uh, they, they're possibly even trading masks. Um, they need the oxygen. You're taping this thing. It, it gets absolutely filthy and stuck to their face. And, and, and we've, all, you know, now we've, we've got more medical issues uh, from that. And uh, you know, there, there's no common sense with this. It's uh, very totalitarian. And I uh, think if you just go back and follow the law, and, and it was peaceful in the beginning, everything would be fine. So I'm I'm asking, a lot of parents are asking to just please follow the law. We have rights. Okay, thank you. Hello, this is for agenda topic 11, new business, BRD1, consider challenge to executive order and emergency rules. My name is David Sinclair of Jupiter, and I think that violating state law or civil rights and then punishing children and families for for defying your non-law rule is the most hypocritical and disrespectful act this board could have done. We've all seen Burke without a mask indoors asking for guns, lawyers, and money. 
the whole rules for thee and not for me mentality is not only unjust, it solidifies this board's position as wannabe petty tyrants. To quote Thomas Jefferson, there is no justification for taking away individuals' freedom in the guise of public safety. Thank you. My name is Alina Simpson. I'm calling about agenda item B, D1, medical exemptions for mask policy. I have two children in Palm Beach School District. One of them has a medical condition and cannot wear a mask. My son gets headaches, his nose bleeds, he has sensory issues. He needs a medical exemption today. We cannot wait for 504 to be processed and approved. It could take months. Plus, 504 should not even be a route for children like my son. As he doesn't have a disability, he has a medical condition that prevents him from wearing a mask. My children had COVID not long ago, and they did not have to be medicated or hospitalized. But right now, my son has to be medicated every day because of the mask, just to be able to wear it and go to school. That is cruel to my son and children like him. While I strongly believe it should be a parent's choice when it comes to masks, at the least, you must add a regular medical exemption as a temporary solution right now. Please stop, stop harming our children. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, school board members and Superintendent Burke. My name is Emily Bailoff, and I'm calling to speak on agenda item number nine. Um, I am a concerned uh, constituent and a member of our community, and I remain particularly concerned with the fact that the anti-maskers are once again uh, wreaking havoc and continuing to do so uh, via um, using our school board meetings as their platform um, to spread their dangerous propaganda and then derail uh, the main purpose of these meetings, which is to get things done. Um, there is a simple solution to deplatform them, streamline public comment, and create more productive meetings. Please change the procedures for public comment to allow for safe and productive meetings. Please allot a specific amount of time for public comment. For example, 30 minutes per person. And really, if you see a name twice, perhaps for an agenda item and then again for a non-agenda item, those people should not be allowed to speak more than once. Please allot a specific number of speaking spots to students, community members, and staff. Use a lottery system to determine who gets to speak if there are more people who wish to speak than spots available. And then any additional comments can be submitted via email. Adopting these procedures will allow for safe and productive school board meetings. In addition, my concerns relate to uh, the idea that once again, um, we are not going to stand firm with the mask mandates in our schools. Um, we must stick with um, use of a 504 plan in order for any parent to opt a student out of wearing a mask. We have over 2,000 cases of COVID um, at this point in this county alone, and it would be detrimental to offer the parents of children who uh, they're using as pawns um, uh, to, to then have a loophole to be able to send their kids to school without masks. If they have leeway, if you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. And um, there are doctors that we are well aware of who will give these parents doctor's notes and then we will be back where we started at the beginning of the school year. Um, and so it's vital that you stay the course, stay strong, and do not waver from the, from the original mask mandate. Thank you. Yes, I am calling in regards to the mask opouts with a physician's note. My name is Jeffrey Sanders. I am concerned about mass opt-outs with a doctor's note only. If students have a real and documented legitimate medical issue, it would already be reflected in their current school status with an active 504 plan or an ADA paperwork. 
Let's not give parents a license to go doctor shopping to come up with a contrived illness. Please continue to mask up properly, wash hands, and socially distance. Palm Beach County, to save lives and respect our healthcare workers. Hi, my name is Tracy Lawler. I'm a parent in Palm Beach County. I have several concerns that I want to bring to your attention today on this August 25th meeting in regard to items 11 and 12 on the agenda. First, holding these workshops in the middle of the day does not give parents a chance to be a part of these meetings. A 2 p.m. meeting is when parents are either working, picking up children from school, or in the middle of a school day. On the agenda, it indicates that you are considering to eliminate the option for recorded public comments like mine right now, and I think this is unacceptable. We are taxpayers and you are elected officials. We have the right to be a part of these meetings and as elected officials, you should be taking into account our comments about the policies you're looking to make. Second, I want to remind you that as a board, you are breaking the law by forcing our children to wear masks. The Parental Bill of Rights and Governor DeSantis' executive orders are abundantly clear. Mandating that our children be masked in school is breaking the law. To go even further, the district isn't allowing for medical exemptions. This is an extremely bold move. Our children are being disciplined because their parents are exercising their legal right to make medical decisions for their own children. Our children are being punished and denied access to their constitutional right to a safe, secure, quality education because they are exercising their basic human right to bodily autonomy and sovereignty. Finally, I saw and heard Mr. Burke's comments at the podium at the Chamber of Commerce meeting the other day. He was unmasked and addressing a room full of unmasked people. All the while, our children are being harassed, mistreated, and punished in our schools, being forced to wear a mask all day. His comments, and I quote, said, yes, send lawyers, guns, and money, please. A comment like this from a student or faculty member at a school would have resulted in immediate disciplinary action. The things we are fighting for as parents are vitally important to our children's physical safety, mental health, education, and success. To be joking at all and to have said trigger words like lawyers and guns is a poor representation of a leader and certainly not the kind of role model who should be set before our students and representing our district. We are fighting for our rights and to protect our children, and we will not back down. Thank you. Hi, this is Amber Ross. Um, I'm a mom with a child in the Palm Beach County school system, and um, I want everyone to know that there is nothing more important than the safety and health of my kids and all the kids that go to the school. Uh, these masks are just a false sense of protection. And it does not protect against this virus. My child can't breathe, and I mean, that just breaks my heart. Um, if they're allowed to go sit in the cafeteria and take off their masks while they're eating, there's no reason they shouldn't be able to walk into their classroom and take their mask off at their seat. Um, it just doesn't make any sense. And I truly believe that most of you, most of you in this room, do and are concerned for the health of our kids and the teachers. But ultimately, it all comes down to the parent's decision for each of their kids, and it is our right to choose what is best for them. So if you want to wear a mask or put a mask on your child, by all means, but please do not take away the parent's choice. Thank you. Hi, my name is Giovanna Dom. I'm speaking on agenda item BRD1, challenge to the executive order. I have two children in public schools in Palm Beach County. I believe that parents and not schools should choose whether their children wear masks in the classroom. This is based on my own experience and studies that I've read that indicate there's little difference in COVID spread among children, whether they wear masks or not. I'm not anti-mask or pro-mask. I am for a parent's freedom to choose. In the spring of 2020, my family and I followed every pandemic precautionary guideline. We stayed home, interacted with as few people as possible. We wore masks everywhere, disinfected constantly. We even disinfected our groceries before bringing them in the house. And despite all of these precautions, my children got COVID and my husband and I did as well. I believe that parents and not schools should choose whether their children wear masks in the classroom. 
facial expressions are essential to human connection and wearing these masks distracts the children from learning. The mask mandate violates the parents' um, bill of rights. It protects the rights of parents to make indirect health care decisions for their children. And the law prohibits the state and any sub governmental entity from impinging upon those rights. And for this reason, again, I believe that parents and not schools should choose whether they mask their children wear masks in the classroom. Thank you. Board members, that'll take us to under new business, uh, BRD1. I recommend the board discuss and take legal action, if any, on a challenge to the recent executive order and or emergency rules of the State Board of Education and our Department of Health relating to COVID. General Counsel? No, I don't need a motion. Yet. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let me first say that the action that the board has taken to date has been within the board's constitutional authority, which is to ensure the health, safety, and welfare of students. There are at least, uh, at the moment, 10 school boards that have exercised the same constitutional authority, and the numbers of those school boards are climbing. Today, I'm asking that the board vote to give me the authority to engage outside counsel to provide the board advice and discuss strategies on all issues, including but not limited to constitutional, statutory, and regulatory issues regarding the school board's mass mandate and representation of the school board in all pending cases and any future cases that the school board may foul, join, collaborate, intervene in, or defend in any forum. Of course, it is my intention to keep the board informed of any action taken before it is taken but it is, I'm asking this that it is without the need to have to come back to the board before moving forward if it is determined and agreed by the outside counsel and myself at, the, at my direction that the action is necessary. Over the next week, we may find that time is of the essence and there may not necessarily be an opportunity to bring it back in time to the board. Board members, I need a motion in order to start discussion. Motion by Mrs. Whitfield, second by Mrs. McQuinn. What's your, what's your motion, Mrs. Whitfield? Sorry, I'd like to move that we um, and uh, authorize general counsel to approve getting um, outside counsel to work on any of our legal needs that as they come up. Ms. McQuinn, that's your second on that? Okay. Discussion? Sir, the public portion is over with. I'll, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt you didn't hear the rules at the beginning, but if you speak out again, you'll have to leave the room. Is there discussion, board members? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Superintendent POL GC 1. I recommend the board approve development of proposed revised policy 1.03 school board meetings. Motion by Mrs. Andrews, second by Ms. Ayala. Discussion? Thank you. Um, I wanted to bring this up um, really to discuss some of the things that have been mentioned earlier today. So I appreciate uh, my fellow board members having the same concerns that I did. Um, I'm very uh, worried about the decorum in the meetings. Um, I think that we should uh, ask general counsel as we're going forward with this policy to add a part in there um, about the decorum so that we include that into our um, policy. Um, the specifically what I would like to have included is a piece about um, curse words being used by members of the public, um, words that are degrading to um, really anyone, um, I don't think should be allowed to be continued on when we are having a recording or any um, person in public. And finally, I really uh, did not like last week when one of our staff members uh, was called out by name. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of things you can say to us, um, but I, I really do take offense to uh, someone talking about our staff members. Um, that was um, hard for me because I feel like our staff is working very, very hard and I would like to stand up for them. So I would like to ask um, through uh, this policy as we go forward, if we can ask uh, general counsel to put some, some bits in there that would really uh, support us during these meetings to make sure that we remember this is a school district, children watch these meetings. Um, I would really like to you know, elevate the level of discussion and, and really protect everyone uh, within the comments that are made. Thank you. Ms. Ayala. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so the policy that's in front of us today, I agree with everything that's on it. And again, thank the general counsel and her team for bringing this forward to us. Um, I wanted to uh, ask general counsel to confirm that we will be having the opportunity for a workshop in the near future to talk about issues at large regarding the meeting conduct and decorum. That is correct. So as, as I indicated at the last meeting that the purpose of this policy was to address uh, specifically what the board had asked, which is um, the uh, taking out of the recorded messages, some cleanup and some other areas um, that um, had been brought to our attention um, to uh, like the titles and, and subject areas and some uh, and it just all around cleanup. And so um, as far as a deeper dive into the policy, it is our intention uh, after we after if assuming that this gets adopted to bring those back around so that the board can uh, do a deeper dive and in, including if it is the board's pleasure to address some of the issues with decorum and other things that have been raised by the board. So general counsel, uh, if I may, it's my, it's my understanding that if we, if we leave this at the way it's been published today, we stay on schedule for the recorded messages. But if we add anything, that's going, we're going to have to have a workshop on that first, right? And it's going to hold up the process. Correct. All right, Ms. Brill, uh, Vice Chair Brill. Thank you. So um, I'm not asking for this change today, but I want to make all of you aware that when we do bring it back, many years ago when I used to speak regularly at these meetings, and I mean regularly for, for t more than 10 years, I used to come with three, three versions of my speech, the three minute, the two minute, and the one minute. Uh, Mrs. Andrews remembers those days that you would come in here and depending on the number of speakers, the chairman would say, okay, speakers today, you're going to have X number of minutes. So I think that in the future we need to have a conversation to figure out where is our cutoff in terms of numbers, how many minutes do we want the, the speakers to have because these meetings are for the business of the board, right? We want to hear from the public, but you know, going till midnight um, when it's not just, it's not the hours, that's not the problem. The problem is your mental capacity at that point to do the deep dive into the business. If it's hindering our business, then we're either going to have to limit the number of minutes that they get or figure out if we take a certain number and then take the rest later on. So that's my suggestion. I'm not suggesting we do it today, but I just want to put that on your radar. Mrs. Andrews. Thank you, and I do believe this school board has been very generous um, with the policy at as it relates to public comment and how we run our school board meetings. But we know that we've got to get the business done of the school board. Uh, I do believe in people having a voice and having their say. I, I'm just a, a firm believer. I think all of us are, and I like it when uh, we can do a vote and when we can do that two third votes to limit the time. I think we just have to take that action. We know how busy our meeting is. And when we see the numbers when we walk in here, we know then that we may have to make that decision quickly, Ms. Braille, and to the board that we're going to have to change how we do business. I was listening to the, uh, the State Board of Education meeting the other day, and I know they do not play. They cut you off in about a minute. So you are many people talking about, you know, the governor and the state board. They don't play. You better get it out quick or you cut off the record. I've never seen us do anything like that here in Palm Beach County. We've been very generous, but right now we're missing the ability to be able to discuss. This is the only time that we get a chance to speak to one another because of how the law reads. I mean, we cannot have conversations in private. So this is our time to do our business, and I like this policy, but when we see our business can't be uh, taken care of in a timely manner, then when we get in here, we're going to have to make those changes quickly so we can do the business of the board. Thank you. And board members, I'd like also for us to consider at some point when we get to the workshop, um, all speakers speak at the beginning of the meeting during public comment. There are no agenda or non-agenda speakers. You're given the period of time that the board elects to give them and they cover whatever they're going to cover. So we don't have two chances for people to speak to us. I also think we should do away with the speakers at workshops. The workshops are a time for the district to bring us information so we can figure out what we need to do. People have the opportunity to talk to us before we vote on that because we don't take any action at a workshop other than receive information. We are backlogged with the number of workshops. 
that we want the, the, the administration to pr provide to us. But the problem is you can't schedule three one-hour workshops on a day and when you have a board meeting because we don't know how long it's going to take when we get the room filled with people that want to talk to us at, at the workshop. So hopefully we can discuss that when we do have a workshop on the board policy so that we can actually get information from the administration that we need in order to make decisions on board policy. And so I hope hopefully uh, we can all discuss that later. Is there any other discussion? Um, Dr. Robinson and then Mrs. Andrews. Thank you. I just want to again express um, my reservations about people in this climate providing their home address. Um, you know, I know we also have in there the option of their school district number or city of residence, which lowers my concern a bit. Um, I, and I understand the, the problem we were trying to solve with that. I mean, but a public speaker can just walk up and say, you know, I live in Lake Worth or I'm in District 3 or they can, so I don't know that that really gets us to solving the problem. I think the address would get closer to that, but I have great concerns about people speaking their mind in this climate and giving their home address. I don't have the solution um, for that, but it just gives me pause. Thank you. Mrs. Andrews and Mrs. Whitfield. Uh, the Council of Great City Schools sent us uh, a survey just uh, a few months ago about uh, those 75 largest districts across the country and how they actually run their board meetings. I think uh, probably Ms. Baz has that. And if she can get that back to us again to look at it. Uh, one thing I remembered reading was that some districts actually allow public comment before the meeting for an hour. And then, you know, depending on how many people, they kind of time it and that's it. Once the regular meeting start, the true time is set for the meeting. And that's what I'm really concerned about, that, you know, the conduct in here and the clapping and all of this, we can't get to our work. People are listening at home and wondering what's going on here with the school district of Palm Beach County. I do want to hear your voice, but maybe that's something to think about uh, as we get into our workshop as to a, a specified time. But when we really get into the business of the meeting, we've heard your comment. Let's have our meeting do our work for the benefit of all of the public so that we can move forward. Thank you. I just want to um, say that I, I do hear you, Dr. Robinson, and I believe Ms. Brillo also made this comment last week about the addresses. Um, I think it would be prudent to take out the address um, just upon further reflection. I, I know how, um, you know, so many people told me that, they're, that they are intimidated to come here to our board meetings right now, um, and they don't want to share their uh, thoughts even without an address, so I can't imagine an address would work. Um, but I do really support the idea of uh, having a city included in there. I think, um, you know, for me, I want to know if you're in my area. Like, I want to, I want to have a feel for who you are and, wh you know, where you're coming from, and and if I'm doing a good job representing you. Like, that's what I, I really want to know. So, um, I think we could just adjust this slightly and just have it say city of residence. Um, I think that would be enough for me to feel kind of a, just a general understanding of if they're a Palm Beach County resident or not and, you know, where within the, the county they do reside. So I think we could just pop out that little bit that says address and just include city of residence, and I'd be happy with that. Thank you, Ms. Whitfield. Before I call on Ms. McQuinn, um, General Counsel, I don't believe, board members, I don't believe we have enough in the, in the motion that was made. Uh, we gave her, auth we are th authorized her to engage outside counsel, but we, we need to get clarification that she also has the authority to file or join legal challenges and lawsuits. So the maker of that motion was Mrs. Andrews. Do you agree with that modification to your motion? No, it was me. It was me. Sorry, who it was me. Mrs. Whitfield. And I, yeah, I'd absolutely make that change. Thank you. And, and Ms. Ayala, you seconded that? Mrs. Mrs. McQuinn? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are far down the line, so it's, you know, <laughs> musical chairs. Okay, so th the motion is, is includes that language? Okay, uh, Mrs. McQuinn, go ahead. I don't want to um, speak out of place, but right now, I we've asked for a workshop. I understand we're going to have a workshop about um, our school board meetings. So. It's my preference that we don't all workshop it now. 
I feel like we're workshopping it right now. So if we could come back to what we are bringing up tonight, which is the recorded messages. I, I'd like to just keep this simple. I, I agree, Ms. McQuinn. I think the point was just to let, uh, let the general counsel's office know if they're gonna get a workshop going, some of the items we'd like them to consider discussing at that workshop. Is there any other discussion? We can take a vote on the motion. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. That takes us to BG1, Mrs. Uh, Vice Chairwoman Brill. Thank you. So there seems to be some misunderstanding regarding uh, my discussion item. First of all, I want all of you to know that I am not looking to allow medical letters for all students in opening up the floodgates. So let me be very clear about that. However, we need some language to provide for those instances where a well-documented medical condition that does not fit into the ADA and 504 parameters allows for a modification. For example, a mom called me who has three children in our school. She's not opposed to masks. Two of her children can wear them. The, the other child has a documented serious condition that does not fall into 504 because it does not limit his education and she will have to withdraw him from school if he cannot wear a face shield as opposed to a mask. Our current policy doesn't allow for him to do so, which leads me to a question I'll, I'll ask in another minute or so of our general counsel. When I met with general counsel yesterday, we discussed that not all true medical conditions fall under ADA or 504. Ms. Bernard said that she tried to interject some concerns at our last meeting. Um, perhaps this is the reason why the other nine districts are not mirroring our policy language, but rather have modified it. So my suggestion, and it's a suggestion, is to have legal review the language prior to the policy coming back September 1st and recommend some tight restriction that would allow for those rare instances um, where um, they need to approve those, the people reviewing those requests will have the ability to approve them. And so I'm gonna ask Ms. Bernard if you would please confirm as discussed that there are some valid medical issues that may not fall under ADA and 504. And also that when a student, this is my question, when a student is provided with an exemption for wearing a face mask, are we working with the family for the student to use some other face covering where possible? Are we having them wear a face shield? Because I would like all students, regardless, to wear some type of protection. So I want to make sure that when we exempt them, we're just not giving them a blanket exemption, that there is that opportunity, even though a face shield is not as much, co as much protection, if they're able to wear one, I want them to do so. So, and I don't know if we can do that un unless it's explicit in our policy. So I'm asking Ms. Bernard two questions and I'll leave it, Ms. Bernard. Sure, so you're, you're correct that not every, uh, every, um, medical condition limits a major life activity. So not every medical condition would qualify necessarily for an ADA accommodation. Um, with that being said, my understanding of how the teams work um, is to evaluate what is the best accommodation if the student qualifies for one um, to determine what the best accommodation is. And sometimes that does vary. So to answer, I think your second question, um, it doesn't necessarily, and it has to be reasonable, so it doesn't always necessarily mean that the accommodation granted is going to be no mask. Sometimes it's a face shield, sometimes it's a clear mask, right? Um, sometimes uh, it could be positive behavioral reinforcement, such as um, trying to encourage the student to wear the mask. So it can be a number of things um, that are, um, part of data points, if you will, that the team will consider and evaluate and then determine what accommodation is reasonable and what's in the best interest of the student. I hope that answers both of your questions. Mrs. McQuinn, then back to Vice Chairwoman Brill. A reason that I voted no to the amendment last week was because we were totally rewriting the recommended policy without, in my mind, that we had adequate time to address it. So I first want to make that clear, and also that twice during that meeting, I said I was in support of the temporary mandate 
for its students and employees. I don't want to do that again. I don't want to have to keep coming back because we don't have time to read it. I read these, our, we have two main jobs, policy and being financially uh, solvent. And I know that Mr. Burke would disagree with my words there, but it's money and policy. So when I read a policy carefully before we come here, I'm not, I'm just without, we were changing line after line, and I was uncomfortable with that. So I'm just saying, please, I don't want to do that again tonight. Go ahead, Vice Chairwoman Brewer. Thank you. So first of all, Ms. Mrs. McQuinn, I appreciate you, and I had no intention of bringing back that policy, so don't worry. I spoke to legal about maybe there's a way that you know she can make some recommendations, but the most important part of my comment is that I want to make sure that even when the students have an exemption, that the opportunity for them to wear a face shield or some other co covering, it, it's not only suggested, but that we're trying to do that. Because I don't want any child, and this is where the public missed, I didn't know how to word my discussion item, but what I'm really trying to go for is that every child has some kind of protection on their face. And I want to make sure that that's clear to the families, you know, and I don't know, I'm not a doctor, so maybe there's some odd case that they can't, but at the very least, a face shield um, might be the way to go. So I'll leave it at that, but that was the purpose of my discussion item, and I just want to make that clear because I couldn't do so before. Okay, if there's no other discussion on that, the, the general counsel's office suggested that we revote on the motion. If, uh, the prior motion on the uh, Ms. Bath, can you restate the motion as, as as it was modified so we can get a revote on that? Motion to authorize the general counsel to hire outside counsel and file or join lawsuits and challenges. Motion by Erica Whitfield, second by Barbara McQuinn. All right. Is there any discussion on that motion as it's been read? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries seven zero. Mr. Superintendent, if you have nothing else, I believe Mrs. Andrews. Just a point of personal privilege uh, tonight. I just want to say I heard a lot from people in here today, and I want to thank our superintendent, Mr. Michael Burke, and the district's uh, leadership, Mr. Tierney, and all the team and the work you did this week in putting this uh, policy in place for us. I had a chance to call a lot of the principals and I talked to them personally, and they did a, a, a great job, and they're still doing a great job trying to take care of students. And when we heard about these uh, instances in here today, I just know that I believe in teachers and principals trying to work with all of our children, and this is hard for the parents, but you know, there's, there's so many options. I don't wanna lose anybody in Palm Beach County School District, but this is a mandate. And we've got to keep everybody safe. And you know, the Hope Scholarship, you know, the virtual school processes out there, homeschooling, there's so many other options. I don't want any, any kid to be upset, but I just tell you, I was really uh, excited to know, and I know this from the years of being in the school district, that our principals are awesome, our teachers are awesome, and this team here, you all did it this week, because I was scared, and I didn't know what was gonna happen on the first day and on the second day, and now we're on the third day, and everybody's still trying to work together. I just wanna encourage you to continue to work together, and Mr. Burt, your team, just continue to be patient and work through this. We know that we, it, our goal is to keep all the children safe, so I just wanna put this special thank you out to you all. We see what you're doing, we appreciate it, we care about all the children, and we wanna work with all these parents too, but we've got to get this mandate. Thank you. thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Andrews. And the superintendent, in the case, has nothing else. I just want to follow up on Mrs. Andrews and thank another group that were here tonight. And I want to thank our police officers. I know the board puts you in a difficult situation tonight, but I appreciate your assistance in us keeping this meeting, you know, civil and, and under control. Uh, if there's nothing else, we'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mrs. Andrews, second by Mrs. Whitfield. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned.